How you feeling? You ready? Is you eating? Have you had something to eat? I need. I needed it. I needed it. That's why I was like, give you some extra time because I ain't dealing with no uh hangry Jason this evening. Like, mm. Nah. I haven't been there for. Never been there in a minute. <laughs> I know. Because I'd be like, nah, go ahead and eat. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the black sisters looking out for the brothers. Kind of like in this movie, ain't it? It was a lot in this movie. I definitely uh, appreciated seeing that, for sure. But let's go ahead and get it started. We got to go to the court. You know, um, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Was It Good Though podcast, where we discuss, debate, and sometimes argue on movies and TV shows, old and new. Yep. I am one of your hosts. My name is Jazz. I am joined with Jason. Jason, how you feeling this evening? Why are you all <laughs> laughing? <laughs> if you, if you, I don't know if you ever noticed it, but if you listen to them, listen back. Whenever you introduce, you always say "yep." As, <laughs> after every 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 introduction, you always say "yep." After you, uh... but you remember when I used to struggle on the intro? Like that shit used to beat my ass. So once I do a smooth, that's just my confidence, like reassuring me, like "yep, you did good this time." <laughs> So you on your you on your you on your Jeremy swag today? I see. I mean, just a little bit. I ain't gonna be just, lying like him. I ain't gonna uh, be lying well, like him. We gotta get into it. We definitely gotta get into it. But I'm doing well. Um, I'm well fed. Um, <laughs> but I, how, how I need to ask you how you doing? Like uh, you just celebrated, like right? You just celebrated. I did celebrated I, life. I did. I did. You know. Uh. I ain't gonna lie on this episode. Celebrated 35 years of life. Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> next year it's gonna be 29 years. Hey. <laughs> so and remember, guys, go back two weeks, <laughs> two weeks ago in Spider-Verse, she was 28. Remember that. Remember it, write it down because the jazz today is better than the jazz yesterday. <laughs> That's what I call improvement. And do not hold me accountable for 34-year-old jazz, because this is 35-year-old jazz, Jason. That is the energy I'm, today. I'm with it. All I'm right. With it. But anybody new to the pod, yes, would be on some silly foolishness. But you know, it is what it is. We we get our jokes off. But uh welcome. If this is your first time, uh this episode we will be reviewing for episode 54. Ooh, White Men Can't Jump, the movie that recently released on Hulu. So the 2023 mm -hmm. uh, version of this. So if you have not seen it, please go ahead and pause the pod. Uh, just put a reminder to come back and check us out after you have watched this film. I believe it's been out for at least over a month. So mm -hmm. um, definitely worth watching. You guys check it out. So since we will be discussing it and reviewing it, that means, of course, we will be spoiling it. So this is your spoiler alert. But y'all make sure to please like, subscribe, rate, review, all of that stuff. And shout out to everybody that is returning. And shout out to everybody. This is your first time. All right. So, Jason, I believe we both did rewatches of the original because we want to make sure we are well informed, but also we enjoy different uh, feet callbacks and connections when it's originals uh, to remakes. So mm -hmm. when you said you did it, I said, ah, oh, hell, let me go ahead and pull it up because I wasn't going to do it. But I was like, I don't want Jason being the only one fully prepared for class. So I was like. So to be fair, this is, I forgot about this, but this is one of the tapes that I used to frequently watch. So it was, so for me, it was just like, I mean, you know, like most things you listen to like music or movies you watch, it's just muscle memory. It's just like, oh, wow, okay. It's just like the little small details. Then that movie came out in 92. So we were like baby at that point. So watching it over the years, it's certain stuff. She was like, oh, so that's what happened in that moment. And, I, you know, Gloria and the old was, was was a bit much. Gloria and the old one was a bit much. I enjoyed her character, but she, she was a bit much in my opinion. I don't know. What you think? There was one scene where I was like, all right, sis, that's you doing was the extra. The, was it the scene when she asked for a cup of water? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> when I watched it, I was like, what? Like, I'm not asking you or relating to you like, oh, I'd be thirsty too. I if, if I told my dude I'm thirsty and he said, well, I'd be thirsty too sometimes. I'm like, I ain't ask about you. That was me telling you to go get me some water. So Woody Harrison's character in that, I think, did what he was supposed to do. But Gloria was wild in that. 
But um, this movie, it's not really much of a remake. It's much of um, like an updated, somewhat similar story. But they definitely went down two different avenues and introduced um, a lot of updated elements that I will say. Uh, this opening scene, we saw the late, great um, uh, Lance Reddick in this. And this is our second film this year because we just did John Wick 4 that he was also in. Um, and so just, I didn't know he was in this film Ooh. and it really caught me off guard. I was just like, oh shit, I'm sad again. After I was just like, all right, we'll be about to see. But, uh, just seeing him in this and he was in it, uh, he had a nice, a few, uh, nice amount of shots of this. And so with this opening scene, it already put the tone in a very positive space because you see a black father training his young black son. Okay. And so you saw the relationship between them. And so I'm not going to lie to you, like seeing uh, Kamal as a young, inspiring basketball player and his father rooting and just loud screaming his name, like, you know, he's successful. It's going to be great. Did this remind you of uh, Lamar Ball by chance? Because I immediately thought of Le uh, Le Lamar Ball when I saw this and I was just like, I thought that was dope. To a certain extent, yes. So I'm not the biggest basketball. I'm not the, I'm not the best, biggest basketball guy. Uh, but it it gave me a little bit of LeVar ball, but it also made me think about LeBron James. Um, okay. There was a there was a big thing when back in, well, early 2000s, we knew he was going to be the first draft, the first round draft pick out of high school. Um, his I believe his mom or some kind of way there was a, a big scandal. I'm going to air quote that. Uh, he got to escalate. Same exact car. Um uh, when he was in high school, it, it may have been something even bigger, but there was a big thing. Like, how can he get this? You single mama home. You ain't got a job. You still in school. Where's his money coming from? So that's what it made me think about in that. But LeVar Ball, I love that as well, because he's definitely been instrumental, super um Pushed his, pushed his kids, pushed all three of his kids, said he was going to be, he set out to do something and he did. It. So, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. And I also see in this opening scene when um, Lance said, this is my son. I'm going to all his games. I'm going to always be there for him. I immediately was like, all right, this ain't going to end well. Because normally when a parent say something like that, I'm just like, something about to happen. It's it's like Disney movies in the '90s all over again. They always want to, <laughs> like, they're always gonna take a parent, and I'm just like, obviously, this is our main character at a young age. Something must have happened because he didn't go to the league, <laughs> and so I was just like, all right, what turning point happened? And it's unfortunate because it seemed like he had a lot of promise, and how, like scouts were looking at him. But then we get a mm -hmm. ten year jump, mm -hmm. and we see Kamal is still at his high school gym. Damn. Like what? Like with this scene, like what was you thinking? You was just like, "Oh hell!" Like what happened? I was looking at it like, was it? You know, I'm thinking injury, possibly. Like right. it was, there was some type of injury. Um, not really, not, not really thinking too much on it. Or maybe it was a situation where he just wasn't good enough. Because at times we we have those people, like that guy in our neighborhood, super good, or in our school, super good, but they just weren't the best when they went to college because you can be the best person here but when you get there it's a whole bunch of yous out there so and there's only so many of them that can go to the league so um but it wasn't but it, you know I, I i love this entire scene um uh, they're all already completely different from the original movie because it was like and that was one major difference like the uh, this movie is slick raunchy but the other movie way raunchier like the jokes and it gets brought up in the movie like it's it was like a i guess a, a meta joke that's brought up like there's so much until you like you're too serious like joke a little bit like um when you're on the court that was when um <laughs> when jeremy or jack harlow's character was like there's so much untapped uh there's so much so many untapped things you can go into he was like like what he said i'm good i'm good oh. <laughs> I remember that he was like, you trying to say another racist joke, weren't you? Because in the first one, it was just a whole bunch of you black, you ugly, yo mama, this, that, and the third super like crazy jokes. Um, 
But of course, like I said, he's on this basketball court. Of course, he's killing the he killing the people in the gym. Uh, he pulls up on this guy Renzo, um, and Speedy. Of course, familiar face, Ben Staples. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Renzo's character. He's on a lot of shows. I don't feel I thought I don't think you watch, but I'm real familiar with him as well. I don't, but I don't like that you made that assumption. I mean, I'm, you was I, right, I but I did. I wanted to ask. I didn't want to. Because assume. I don't watch none of Fifty Cent shows. I guess he's in every last one. I'm of mad. Cent I'm mad. I'm mad. You guessed that. He's in that. He's also in Dave. So it, oh. I mean, he's on. So there's there's two shows that I know. Um, but I like his character. Like whenever he comes up, it's always uh, he's always a likable person. He got killed in one of them shows. I'm not gonna say which one. Kind of shifty in another one, but I ain't gonna say which one. So you know he, you know, but he's a good, but he's always that type of character. So you got this thing uh, with him and you know him and Vince Staples. They basically trying to get into this two hundred two tournament. What did you, what did you feel about the chemistry between, um, between the uh, Kamal's friends? I enjoyed it because they definitely gave me the uh, they balanced each other out, and so some of us if we're lucky enough to have those two friends that balance each other out and they're just so in sync. I think they did a very good job with these two. And I also feel like um, the one you said just seemed shicey and everything. What's his name? Uh, that's Renzo. Renzo. That's Renzo. What, was Renzo eating in every scene? So this nigga was hungry like all the time. And so I caught that on my rewatch. I was like, damn, he eating again? And I didn't see it today. was in the hospital later on. I was like, yeah. like you eating again but I thought they were funny especially when they saw um, Jeremy walk in <laughs> <laughs> and so they was just like yo should we rob him and he was like oh hell yeah he was like yo why would we do that and then like after that uh, exchange with Jeremy it was like oh yeah we should rob him to teach him a lesson I was just like <laughs> you know I love their chemistry and I love when I saw both of them on in a scene because they were just that comic relief that you needed to where it wasn't too much, but it was just enough for the scenes that they were in. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I enjoyed that. And um, it introduced to like Jack Hollow's character, which is Jeremy. Um, completely different. Well, like I said, the, it's, 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 I don't even, I don't even want to say it's like a reimagining because it's, they're completely different from how they were in the previous. Um, and this one, they kind of go the route of, you know, Jeremy was a former college college athlete real good college athlete possibly heading to the league and he's training the kid he's training um training the kid uh i don't remember his name i don't remember the kid's name either but that's fine he's training the kid on the side basketball from kamal's new game comes over he picks it up and he's kind of bsing with the ball and he you know kind of calls him out tells him he's he's using the kid what, what do you think about that like in in that like Jeremy's character training a black kid. Do you feel like there was a, a, a clout situation? I don't think so. Um, I didn't see it as that when I first saw it. I was just like, that, those are probably the nationality of kids at the gym that he's doing training, but he was also training other people when you look at the movie further down. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't think that's exactly what he was doing. So I didn't see anything weird about it, but, and then, <laughs> cause you also see another white trainer training a black kid. So, I mean, also this was uh, one of the screenplay writers for this was Kenya Burris, our third film that we are reviewing by him. <laughs> there we go. I noticed <laughs> that as I finished my second rewatch, I was like, oh shit, you know, Kenya again. Uh, me too. I said, stop getting us. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, hey, I I I mean, uh, from the this is this definitely be second. You got intergalactic first, this second, uh, our people or whatever that was. You people is not on the list. That's it. That 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 <laughs> you said it's not even on the list. No, of the but movies I, that. <laughs> I think it's dope though that he has content on different streaming platforms because this was a Hulu I agree. original, and then you had two Netflix originals. So mm -hmm. I mean, he's getting that streaming bag, but right, he's getting to it. He's definitely getting to it. He he's he's in those right spaces and places talking to the right people. And mixing it up. 
It is. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, like, Jason, yeah, get the joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I trust me. If, if Jack is in it, we already, the joke is already, it's, it's already there. Um, but, you know, we, we have a situation. Uh, you know, of course, Jeremy kind of challenges Kamal to a shoot off. Um, now this this is definitely one of them a scene, an iconic scene from the original movie. You have to you have to bring it over. Um, I do think I prefer the original, the, the original shoot off because it was a a back and forth situation and it felt a lot more at stake. But the way they portrayed this scene, I liked it because it gave you who Kamal was, but it also gave you who Jeremy was and how they were going to play off each other for the the rest of the movie. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, they Kamal takes the first shots. Uh, he hits three, and then Jeremy finds out he is Kamal Allen, one of the biggest athletes that was not only in this gym but in the area. It's like you had someone on you but on someone in your mind, your, your mind was turning. I was like, why you it's like he was gloating come on before he started taking his shots and then Jeremy mm -hmm. was able to use that like okay this has been your gym since high school but what happened to your college career and if that's <laughs> one of the things that's going to set you off you got to have that forethought like especially if you bet $300 mm -hmm. I mean it's it's one thing that we always say you got to stop like gloating or um showboating because mm -hmm. every time you showboat you end up the short end of the stick and that's what Kamal was doing. And I understand, like, he's probably dealt with these kind of situations before. So he's like, it is what it is. Ain't nobody hustled me before. I'm going to go ahead and knock this out. But as soon as Jeremy starts saying, like, was it a, a random fan? And so we're getting flashback shots as well of what happened. And he was just like, you know, did you get arrested? So, and then Kamal's having these flashbacks of what happened. We're seeing exactly what happened. And it's starting to come together to where, like you said, you thought it was an injury, but now you're saying, okay, he had the crowd coming at him crazy. He had to have gotten in a fight with somebody, maybe during that game or after the game. Mm -hmm. And then, like, he missed those two shots. And then I didn't even realize that with the first movie going back and forth and then this one doing everybody take their own shots, Jeremy only had to get four mm -hmm. because Kamal only got three. And so I was just like... I do like that flow better if they would have just you get your shot then like uh, rotate it out instead of doing like straight. I think that'd have been. Yeah, because basketball is a game of rip, um, a game of runs. It's a game of runs. So once you get in the once you get in the flow, it's just boom, boom, boom. So if you do it the way they did in the pre in the original, they kind of switch it back. You you don't really get you can't really get set because you're moving. And then you know like like I said, Wesley Snipes was just like. Soup. He was gloating the entire time. He talking shit, talking. He going around, going through the crowd. He pointing people out, pulling people. Just that. That's just the 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 type of movies in the '90s, which I definitely going back into it. I'm glad we reviewed this because it made me go back and just give me so much more appreciation for that movie. Um, so yeah, and I also um, want to say, um, sorry to cut you off, but thinking about Wesley Snipes when I saw it. It I, like Wesley Snipes was just a great actor to watch, and we don't give him his flowers enough. Amazing! This man is he has range. Like just, I th you, you <laughs> thought about New Jack City was the same exact time. You think of New Jack City, you think of this, you think of uh, was it no better blues. Uh, I'm not sure, but I was gonna go Blade, Jungle which Fever. came later. Jungle, like Wesley Snipes' catalog is insane. And I'm just, and I hate that even just like for myself when I have conversations with people about actors that have range, Wesley Snipes should definitely be in the top people that I think of. But since we haven't seen too many projects from him recently because he had that whole tax issue, we kind of forget until we see one of his projects. But yeah. I just yeah. You know, so. you know, Kevin Hart tried to you know bring it back out. I heard that was a really good series. I didn't watch it. I, oh, I have all, I have all the intentions too, but I heard that was one I need to watch. You saw Kevin in a different space, and it didn't seem weird or forced to me. I actually okay. enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot, and it was also refreshing to see Wesley back acting. He ain't, he ain't miss a beat. 
So but, it's kind of we kind of on a tangent, but we not because it is relevant to what we're watching. But I don't. I hate that black people kind of have to go to a different space to become or get taken serious in like a serious role, especially when they're comedians, like someone like Kevin Hart. So like he's done things like his in his earlier part of his career, he did things that was you know it was it was you know like the the movies that it's a comedy but it's a serious. Well, everything in the nineties was like that, like Friday. Like the original tone of Friday, it was a comedy, but it had a you know more of a, a serious tone compared to what's later. So Kevin Hart has stuff like that, which he's all. I feel like he's he's gotten better as time has gone on, as far as with his range. But I, I hope you not talking about Paper Boys. I love I Paper hope. Soldiers. I love Paper oh, Soldiers. That, <laughs> you knew what I meant, Paper somewhere. <laughs> like you knew what I but meant. I, I love that. I love that though. <laughs> Uh, but back to this movie here, you know, Kamal goes home. Uh, we see uh, a money, uh, aka Tiana Taylor. Um, another difference from the original movie because the wife didn't even have a job; she was just staying at the house, taking care of the home things. Um, he was out hustling from basketball to construction, all these different things. Um, and you know, she's pretty much looking for a shop. Um, in the preview, they're looking for a new house, but I'm here. She's looking for a shop so she can leave the house. Um, wow. And we have the this the nosy friend button into their business. How you feel about this, Chad? I mean, uh, it's always that one friend that gets shown during these kind of movies and situations and relationships. I'm glad they were married for sure. Um, and since it's just all in the business, she's just like, you know, the first is coming up. He's like, oh, yeah, uh, I forgot. I'm going to go tomorrow. And she was like, you can go tonight. First off, sis, mind your business between the conversation between me and my husband. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Mm -mm. Put your put your headphones in and mind your business. And so she's just like, um, she said, credit you no clothes till six. I'm just sitting here like, sis, mind your business. But also like it lets you know she probably talking a hell of shit about Kamal when he's not there. Ooh. Like Right. Or she's, or she, you know, she's saying a bit more than she should to a right. friend. But at the same time, what's too much? If you, you know, what I mean, I mean, if if it's a, if it's the friend that talk a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because we all we all have that that friend we talk to about different stuff, you know? Yeah. No, nah, you don't know. So you don't, so you don't have a, you don't, you don't have nah. one friend you talk to about. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I guarantee you trust that friend with your life. You don't think they'll ever come back and put that. No, nothing like, <laughs> I ain't trying to, <laughs> basically anything that is said, I don't feel like it's going to be repeated. And that's the difference. You got some friends you tell stuff to and they just, but they're first like, thing they can, first thing. But then you have some that's just like, I know for a fact they're not going to repeat that. They, mm -hmm. they, they take all that to the grave and mm -hmm. further. Where the thing <laughs> hell of heaven, but I'm wishing everybody go to heaven. <laughs> so, but yeah, sis was just, she was doing too much. But then in the scene, you know, Kamal's like, okay, I'm supposed to, I'm going to get the money. He just lost $300. Didn't tell her that, but that probably wasn't the best time anyway, because the home girl is there. So it's definitely not good to go ahead and tell her nothing. But I thought the scene was funny because the son was just like, bye, mom, they're going to get some ice cream. And he was just repeating after his dad, which is like, I'm sorry, you're on welfare. And so I was. it was just funny to hear the little boy say that. Because of course, the friend not going to respond. It's like, how your son saying I'm on welfare? But um, I thought their exchange was cute and just like to see the family come together because like, of course, in the first one, Wesley Snipes character had a wife and then a little boy. So mm -hmm. then we catch up with Jeremy. Yeah. Um, Jeremy is also struggling. Uh, he goes into the, goes into the gym. Um, he hasn't been paying his fees, but he's still been using this gym. You know, he, you got a guy kind of tells him, you know, we don't need, we need members or we need some money when you can just boost morale. He was like, yeah, morale don't, morale don't pay bills, bro. Like, stop, stop trying to get that off. And, you know, he previously in the scene, he had, he, after he won the money off of Kamal, he tells him, you can uh, Venmo or cash, you can Venmo or Zell me, bro, or you look like a cash up guy. So, question. What kind of, what does he mean by that? Like, 
Can you tell by somebody that uses Cash App versus Venmo? I, I, that was racist. Because <laughs> I'm sitting here and I was just like, I was like, damn, because I got all three. So exactly. Do I look I like a Cash that. Apper or? Because I got I Venmo, mean, I got Zelle. I prefer. That's, do you have? Do you have a preference though? So Zelle definitely, because I mm-hmm. that goes straight to the card. I, cash App, Venmo, and I I ain't doing that instant because I'm like, wait a minute. That's, Depending on how much the money is, they try to take a percentage off. But Zales, it just goes straight to the card. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but guess what, Jer- just guess what Jeremy using? He uses Cash App as he's going into the gym. <laughs> uh, and he told him, you know, I live for today. Tomorrow isn't promised for us pro folks. And then he looks at him like, what, what the hell is this supposed to mean? Like, what you what, what you got in that bag, white boy? <laughs> Do you feel like this movie ha- d- kind of overdid it on the race jokes? Kenya is involved in this, yes. Is it? Is he? Is it okay for him to use as many race jokes and then also blend races as much as he does? That's his life. That's just right. not it, you know. This but to be to be fair, when you actually have a friend of a different race or different race, race? a lot of times. <laughs> I, I know I was like waste. I, yeah, I, I made that word up. But when you have a friend of a different race, oftentimes it does kind of come off that way. Like it's it's like that. There's like a a layer of tension in that situation, regardless of if I don't think this person is like that per se. But you know, you always have those little. It's always like, do y'all be like, who is y'all? You go, you gonna ask, you're going to ask that question. I'm going to ask that question because that's just who I am. But like. It just be like a, and it's never like y'all is in, like a, a rate like a racial type thing. But it's just, it's just I don't know. It's I don't know. You don't have many white friends, do you, Jess? I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. I don't have a lot. I do have one. Ever one since I there. came to Tampa, it's been tough. But Florida kind of crazy. <laughs> the NC um NCAA telling people not to come down here. <laughs> For what? Cause it's dangerous. <laughs> it's, it's been that. It's, it's been that. Was it so, NCAA? Never mind. <laughs> 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 um, so you got Jeremy here that he's in the gym. He's you know he's trying to hustle. Jeremy's a hustler as well. He got a detox. He's trying to get off. He got diff- three different guys. He's trying to sell it to. Um, and the other guy from you people pulls up. Uh, I can't. I can't even think of his name right now. You talking about CJ or TJ? Yeah, TJ pulls up. TJ pulls up, and he's uh, hey yo, my man. Uh, you know, he kind of throwing jokes at them. Somebody, y'all ready for that? You know, what's gonna happen when you start doing this detox, going to the restroom? And they kind of throw a joke back at him. It was like, look at how small his, you know, his his stuff is. Uh, is that a racial joke, or is that just a, a penis joke? Uh, uh, I'm both. <laughs> so but I was were they trying to say that he used substances? I'm thinking I'm thinking so. Because... Now I don't know if they I don't know if they put the the detox in comparison to what possibly right. which I mean, you know, they did because they didn't they didn't show them not taking the drinks. It just goes to the next scene uh when they in the room. What what do you think about TJ and uh TJ and uh Jeremy's dynamic? And the stem cell research that's going to have Jeremy get his knees back together to where he can go play basketball. Like, he didn't even do research at all. He just listened to TJ and just ran with that. Like, I just, that makes no sense. And TJ doesn't seem like anybody who I would trust with information. I would trust Wikipedia more than I would trust TJ. And Wikipedia is able to be edited. I I think you should trust the person you're taking drugs from. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> that's probably, I probably would trust them probably with more than most people that I can think of. Really? You got just, you know, drugs, are, drugs are crazy today. If you're buying them from somebody, I would hope you trust that they wouldn't do something crazy. People do, but. I don't make purchases like that. Neither do I. Shout out to the dispensaries. Shout um, out to y'all. <laughs> Uh, but Kamal is he's a, he works for BTX, which is almost like FedEx, UPS. Um, he's out making deliveries. 
he runs into what what was it? What's his name? Super Cuz. I don't uh, know. No, Super his... Blood. Super Blood. From he was on Insecure. From I Insecure. Think... I can't remember yeah. his name, but he was, he's his neighbor. <laughs> Man, he pulls up. Uh, he's delivering packages, and of course, Kamal, one of the biggest athletes, he recognizes him. First thing he want to do is he want to take a picture. He wants to boomerang a whole bunch of extra shit that I'm not into personally. When I see people, we've been together. We've seen celebrities. I don't. We're not. We're not it's a hey, they go. What's the call? And we call it a day. It's not. It's not a big thing, but clearly it was to him. And Kamal broke his phone. I mean, so, he. No, nah, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done none of that because Kamal <laughs> definitely looked uninterested. I would only do that if I saw Trevante Rhodes. So, but I think you breaking the name phone. Just, you say this name just like one, two, three. Like that you, that name rolls up your tongue like A, B, C, one, two, three, just. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it does. <laughs> You're a sick person. <laughs> Surprise! But like, when he was trying to do the boomerang, just drop my man's phone on the ground. And I want to, I need to see him in more stuff because obviously this small interaction and then what we're used to seeing him and in insecure, completely different. And then of course, when he was in Issa's web series, um, Awkward Black Girl, he Awkward was talking girl. really slow. We didn't, he was whispering the entire time. We're just like, wait, what? So like <laughs> just seeing him in those three different projects, they're different. But, um, I thought this next scene was funny because then his boss is just like, so a phone? <laughs> you, you, you breaking phones? Like, you couldn't take a selfie? And, if, like, how did you feel about his manager offering, well, telling him about his cake and bake business, which I'm just like, how did that business not take off? Because people selling treats out they, they house. So I'm like, either you just going to the wrong, you in the wrong neighborhood, because I know a lot of people that will purchase some treats. <clears throat> not dropping no names, but it's a big business. So I just, but, and the cupcakes looked it good. Why did he have them at work? And why did he just have them on person? <laughs> I don't know, but them cupcakes look like they was freshly made that morning. And he was like, let me pass these out to my coworkers. Like. Yeah, no, nah, them, look, them look good. I'm not sure why they didn't take off. I def <laughs> That was definitely in my notes. Why didn't this business do well? Like, that that's a, a combination, a great combination. Did you did you recognize the manager from another movie? He looks super familiar. Um, he looks. I guess like he, he's not your Link of Thrones, but you say he, he looks not. what? He looks super familiar though. Like he 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 almost looks like <laughs> um, the little brother from uh, Righteous Gemstones, but I know that's not him. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Two different nationalities. <laughs> Wait, he not white. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie that he was in, we reviewed it and it came out. I don't know when that trash came out, but um the menu. Oh. He was one of the assholes at the table. Okay. 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 And he's not white because he was also Pablo Escobar's son in Narcos. <laughs> See, that's what you you that's what we, that's what you be getting me at. Something about that Narcos. It's a whole bunch of people in there that you be knowing because I ain't never seen that. And you be like, they're not they're not white, Jason. I'm like, what? That's <laughs> like the second or third time you've done that to me on the stop, pod. <laughs> stop saying everybody's white. <laughs> uh, so that's, yeah, you remember you thought John Cena was uh. You said John Cena wasn't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They look, look alike. They look not, alike. See now, we yeah. We already talked about that, Jason. We're not going back to that. We've already <laughs> talked <laughs> about that. But no, nah, I like cake and bake. Wonderful idea. Hopefully, somebody out there comes up with that for real, for real. But not to sell it to their uh, coworkers. But the next scene, we're introduced to Jeremy and Bay. Uh, her name is Tatiana, and we remember where Tatiana is from. Another movie that we reviewed. She's lit. Could not get her character from Intergalactic out my head this entire movie. <laughs> I'm like, Karma, shut your ass up. I was like, Karma can't keep a man at all in no movie. She's just struggling a lot. But she got a break in this. But um, how did you feel about their exchange at dinner? Because then we get a deep dive on Jeremy's mm -hmm attitude views point of view all of that and him as like a boyfriend in his relationship 
Um, with him and Tatiana, I, I knew it was going to be some kind of conflict, which I felt, okay, this is this is similar to the previous. This is where, you know, the situation will be different. Uh, we're not, dis- not, necessarily, not necessarily different, but this is where it's going to be similar, but we will see what the difference is. And it's pretty much Jeremy is careless with his spending. Um, and he isn't the most responsible people in this. And I, the more we, the more Tatiana was on the screen, we learned why or where she stood on this situation. And I understood where she was coming from because right. he's not the most responsible person. Um, I think I said that already. But it's just like Jeremy, his priorities aren't where they're supposed to be. You grown as hell. And you talking yeah. about stem cell to try to go play basketball? Ten thousand. Where your job at? Oh, she's working. He's just training people occasionally. You, I would have been single in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you, so you not feeling my guy Kamal? Oh no, nah. yeah, that's husband right there. <laughs> But he's married. He has a black queen. That's you. I'm just saying. You say you you would be single. You saying if you was in Jeremy's situation, yeah. Tatiana, I, I, which is a which is understandable. And you know, I I get I get it. But both of them are pretty much in the same boat. If you ask me, they holding on to what let them go to a certain extent. I mean, yeah, but I guess hers is bringing in revenue to survive. Now that now that's that's a that's a that, huge that's that's a that's, well she at the same exact time Kamal wasn't bringing on revenue on oh no, I'm not talking deep. about Kamal I was talking about uh Tatiana and Jeremy I know I was saying what I was kind of comparing both of them like I said well oh, gotcha, both gotcha. of the both of the women were the head I mean the winners right now if that's you really true. just think yeah. about it because you know he start he just started going back outside what she said um oh yeah that's and what true. we learned he started going out and started hustling again because he linked up with Jeremy but. Yeah, the women in this was they were holding down. Um in more ways than one. But yeah, Jeremy, his situation was a, a a lot deeper, I feel like, than the one it was with Kamal. He he had already got injured. So that was a big what if situation if you get that surgery and if it even works. It doesn't work for everybody. So Yeah. I mean, it's like he's gambling a lot. And then you're in a relationship with somebody who's also putting her her dreams on hold a little bit, and so she was just basically telling him, like you like you're still trying to do this basketball thing. I just feel like you need to get your focus off of that. You'll probably be happier. And he's just trying to hold on to that dream, while she's just like, look, stuff's still moving out here. She said stem cell research, like those kind of procedures, are for rich people. She said you have an EBT card, and he's like, <laughs> actually. We have an EBT card. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, babe, thank you for making it a thing for us. But you are making selfish decisions to where she has to carry a larger load and you out here lying to her face. Yeah. Shoot, I'm, look, I would have threw a pan at him in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, or throw some grits on that ass. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. He ain't even touched you. You're going to throw grits on the come on. All right, all right. I'll leave the grits. But the pan is definitely getting thrown. <laughs> so, you know, we kind of go, we kind of catch up with, you know, uh, Kamal and his homies. You know, he now he's thinking about going to play into the tournament. He was he was a bit too prideful the first time they actually came up to him. But now they've already found a new person um, to enter the tournament. So we kind of see what you see. What you see now, we kind of see where the story is going. You know, he's probably been link up, you know, with Jeremy to decide to make it. Then we catch up with Jeremy. Uh, he's back in the gym, about to do some training, but he sees, you know, I guess his 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 rival in his head. Um, be, you know, beefing. Not necessarily the beefing, but he's beefing with this guy. He doesn't really know him. And then he sees he does the same lane. He's bigger than what he's doing. has a more well-known kid. And he kind of pulls up on him. Uh, on the on the basketball court, I'm like Jeremy, what you doing? Like, what is the? I he was, I guess he was just upset. Like, why is this guy at the gym training this kid? All this other stuff. I'm like, well, he got the money to pay for the space, unlike you. And he's he's gonna start bringing in more people here. So like, that's a win for the gym. It is. But then here go Jeremy over here hating, and he was just like, you know. And his name was uh 
Philip Will, uh, Williamson. <laughs> and so he was just like, you know, I'm out here training these guys. You know, I got like all these, my, my Instagram is popping. I got some haters in the comments. They probably other white hoopers that wish I wasn't doing all this hooping. I was just sitting here like, what is this? He was like, you know, that white on white crime. We got to stop that. And I'm like, Kenya, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> what is this? Like, And so Jeremy's like, yo, let's go ahead and get this game going. They get the game going and Jeremy's phone goes off that he needs to move his car so he doesn't get charged for parking. He's like, yo, I got to go. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, Jeremy's struggling. Because that's Bang. crazy to leave a game to Bang. go get your car. And then you sitting there waiting to get into free hour parking. I'm like, what? But it seemed like he, like he was about to win the game until his knee went out. His knee went out a lot. I mean, his ACLs are already torn. He hasn't Both. had the he hasn't properly had them he fixed, uh, which is why he's thinking so much about that regenerative regenerative procedure in his knees. But he you know, kind of messes with knees, gets upset, you know, and he runs into Kamal. Kamal tells him, you know, you gonna, gonna let him have it like that. He was like, I proved the point I needed to prove. Was like, she, what, what point did you prove, my brother? Like, I still don't know. <laughs> And he said, he's kind of like, you know, he uh, addressing him, you know, says, we can, you know, run the tournament. And he was like, you're out here trying to hustle people. He said, you know, making them like you can't hoop. He was like, no, you assume I couldn't hoop because I'm white. He was like, no, I assume you can't hoop you like a jackass. And he said, and, and you walking around with testicles around your neck. Tassels, nigga, not testicles. <laughs> That's what he said. I, I heard testicles. He said it kind of fast. I didn't hear it till on my second watch, but I was like, because when I first watched, I said, what the hell did he say? It was tassels, because it looks like the tassels on like a graduation. Ah, app. okay, I got it. Okay, gotcha. I thought, he was, I thought he was trying to make a joke. So I, I At can't. first, I, I thought he said Teslas, and I'm like, that don't make no damn sense. I definitely got Teslas, because they look like balls. But with the little, like, cloth hanging, who balls look like, you know what? Nah, never mind. <laughs> I was going to ask you how many balls have you seen in your life, but <laughs> uh, very balls. <laughs> we not, we not. <laughs> this is not what this episode is about. <laughs> uh, but uh, so they, so they, they, they decide to go ahead and to make this, make this a, a partnership. Um, and they, they start to do some hustling. Um, he starts having kind of. I don't know if he if he was dressing like this on purpose or he kind of told him to dress how he was dressing, but he was dressing kind of weird when he was going to the gym. He was like, I, you must be the only person that know white people can hoop now. Like, that's, that's what we do. Like, we can play and I I play a different game because I got hurt. So it is a little bit slower the way people do stuff when they do things. Um, he told him, you know, just let me, let me work the court. You sit over to the side, we'll get this going. Completely different from the previous movie, like the original movie, because in the original, Wesley was out hooping the entire time. He would just, white boy would just pull up to the court and be like, y'all can pick my pick my teammate. I don't care. We can do whatever we want. It's, no, we're not playing with the white boy. So, you know, he goes in there. So he's the one that's out, out here hustling. He's, you know, gets the guy in the, the, what's that, the, the plastic bag in the first gym. He tells him, oh, you know, yeah. you trash. He tells him you trash. Or you need to work on your jump shot because you, you you're not good at shooting them. And he bets, so they bet one on one, two eleven. But he kept talking, and the other guy pulled up. Now let's bet three hundred, and we can play. What do you think about this first game of hustling that they had? Uh, Jeremy still irresponsible because <laughs> how you bring twenty dollars and y'all have a three hundred dollar bet. And I'm just sitting here like, yeah, this was like on some gang related or above the rim type of energy. Jeremy would have got killed in the first 20 minutes of this movie. Because nah. Have you seen Above the Rim? With of two pops? Well, of course. Okay. So you see, like, Bishop would have got Jeremy out of here immediately. He would have had Avon Barksdale from the wire go ahead and take him out. Because Jeremy was just going crazy. But luckily, when he told uh, Kamal, he was like, all I got is $20. And Kamal was just like, well, how you come here with a 
we got a three hundred dollar bet. He was like, well, we got to make sure we don't lose. So they did what they needed to do when they won the game. Um, and so I thought it was pretty cool, just the different like um scenes that we got of them going to different courts and mm-hmm. Jeremy talking all that shit. And I'm just like, nah, ain't no way. I just feel like a certain hood, like, nah, that should have yeah. I, I see why they switched it, but oh yeah. Realistically <laughs> but, but look but not but jazz now you gotta look now look now. The stuff Jason. that Jeremy the stuff that Jeremy was saying was light hearted compared to what the hell uh, uh, uh I mean this is true but what, what Wesley Woody was Harrison doing, Woody Harrison that's his name Woody Harrison yeah you mean I mean Woody was talking shit um no nah, he was talking crazy but he was talking ne- shit. he was saying Negro he was he was going he crazy did, he didn't say Negro <laughs> out in the street he said it to Gloria <laughs> I, I agree I agree but he he wasn't saying no Negro out in the street but like he was over here saying during one of the games, he was like, Don't tell me you sitting here for saying that your man don't look like uh Malcolm X. Hey, and I'm like that was that was hilarious. He, he did look like Malcolm. I said, Damn, they might need to call you in for the next remake or the next movie. <laughs> but still. That's also a callback to the original movie. The um at the end of it, when he's trying to get Gloria to go into Jeopardy, they say when they go to the court where I can't think of his name right now. Uh, I think it, I think it may have been George. Don't quote me on that. But they go to the bat, the last court at the end. And he was like, um, I can get you to the shot, get you on Jeopardy. So your wife, the girl can be on a lot. He was like, okay, you got to make this shot. And he was like, okay, I'm going to shoot an African girl. He said, nice African nigga. He's like, now you're not shooting on that. Shoot on a sedan. And then the, the basketball goals are painted like an African flag right. on one side and the other one was a day. He was like, no, you got to shoot on that one, but you got to do a hook shot. So I like, I just, it was just a, just a goal, just a little bit of Easter egg. Just the goals was the same. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. I did catch that. I did catch that. Yeah. Cause I saw it. I was like, goal. wait, is that on purpose? But I was like, it's gotta be. It gotta be. That gotta be. Cause that was like, that was a big, that was a nice one. I love he, um, you know, I guess this is when Kamal started having fun with basketball again, because he he it was always serious or just like a out of mind, out of out of sight type of thing for him. So then you try to see him start smiling again when he he uh makes the shot. Um, and they make it to this third court. We see a familiar face, Lil Marta, man, Lil Marta. <laughs> hey, he he had a uh, he had to take a few breaks from the paint. This is what he was doing when he was going on tour. What? <laughs> Damn, this is up. this 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 clearly the multiverse version because he chose love over tour. He chose you know he chose you know over. I mean we still we still think we we think he did right. I mean, he could have still been. He could have easily before he went to the court sent Clifford a postcard. Miss you, <laughs> and then went to the court. So, <laughs> but now nah, like he was talking a lot of shit in this movie, but he got. Oof. I hate it. Crazy. He just kept getting knocked out. I was like, I don't oh like my seeing God. Like that. I, don't I like didn't seeing want him. I didn't. I didn't. No, nah, I didn't want. I'm like, bro, why you take this role? I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> why you so take wrong. this role? That's so wrong for me to say. But you, you know what I mean. Like, don't. So put up, he didn't even put up a fight, Jazz. No, he didn't. So I guess since we see him taking us like a nice amount of wins in P Valley. They was like, you know what? Kenya said, not today. You about to take some L's and you're going to get knocked out twice. And I'm just like, but it was, I, I can't even say that it was good seeing him as something different because hell, the roles are kind of the same. It was very, it was very similar. So, um, my only thing in that is it's dope to see him outside of Pete Valley. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like he, it's dope to see him, you know, people are recognizing his talent. That man is very talented. I hope he really gets a shot, sort of like, um, you know, the guy that was Sinai, uh, Sinequa, that plays uh, Kamal. I hope, because we see him, he's on a crazy run right now. And it's crazy just to think he was on power, like in 2013, I believe, whenever I mean, it first came out. Yeah, that was Kanan's you know son. And Tasha was out here... Uh giving him the goods, but he's not nobody's League of Thrones. But then also, we're doing a movie that he's in next week. So, definitely gonna uh, show that 
chocolate brother some love. I'm yeah, I'm anything I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, it's, it's a few. Uh we often talk about like who are the black key, who are the black people, who are the ones that's coming up that's out here that's doing it. He's one. Um uh, if I see his face, I'm running um to go see it. Pause if you want to, but I'm if I see his face in the movie, I'm definitely peeking, peeping it out. Chris will already say that's like my man crush, whatever. I don't care. Um <laughs> the second person is Jarrell, I think it's Jarrell Jerome. I think that I, I want to get there right, but he, I found out after we finished it, but he is Crowder Mouse in Across the Spider Verse. This was the, the kid that won the Emmy for When They See Us. He had the one standalone episode, like that was probably the most gut wrenching thing you can see. But if you look, if you see him, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. He's also in this. It's a new movie that's coming out this month, actually. It's called um, I'm a Virgo on Amazon. He's going to be a 13 foot, thir- 13 foot, 13 year old. Oh. That kid, he, yeah, he he's a damn good actor. So, they, them two there, anything that they, fa- they face appears in it, I'm going to go watch it because we need more black leads in these things. So, I'm, I'm enjoying just watching. Um, their growth because it's it's just like I would never imagine seeing them. Yeah, when you said uh, Crystal said that uh, that, that <laughs> plays Kamal is your boy crush or your man crush. I was <laughs> you was going smooth with it, and then you start you got deep on the path. So I was like, let me not say my immature joke until he's yeah. Finished. I had the kid. Yeah, yeah. I had throw it in. I had throw you out track a little bit. Nah, but I'm hey, I'm, hey, I'm coming back around. I was gonna say it is Pride Month. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ally, ally. Shout out, shout out, shout out to everybody. Uh, shout out to everybody in their affiliations. Big, big, big lovers over here, whatever y'all choose to love. But, um, so yeah. <laughs> the big lovers. So on, like, man, I don't believe in love. <laughs> That's because I'm jaded. <laughs> so when we on this court with Lil Murder, um, of course, this is another iconic scene they had to put into the movie. So it's either you either have to go super outlandish, because if you repeat it, people are gonna be like, "Oh my God, look at them! Look at what they're trying to do um, in this." What did? How did you feel about this scene? I feel like it was extremely exaggerated. <laughs> I didn't hate it, but I was like, "Bruh!" And I had told you when I saw the flamethrower, I was just like, "So we really saw it?" Because I thought it was just gonna be he's gonna go to his car, everybody's running away, and it cuts to the next scene. It didn't do that because in the original, they were just like, he's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to go get my other gun and I'm shooting everybody up. That and entire, so, but that entire scene is crazy on the whole movie. I, I didn't, mean, I didn't, I don't even remember him not it, having the money. No, and, and then he went to the convenience the store. store. <laughs> so I completely forgot about that too. He was like, I'm going to be back. And I kind of wish they would have adapted that in this in some shape or fashion, but I get that that scene was just so unique and so funny. They were just like, nah, we're going to leave that alone, especially because he was just like, Clarence, is that you? And then he sold his gun to the convenience store clerk. And so he was just like, look, I ain't got 500, (laughs) but I got 250. So I enjoyed that from the original. And this one, when they showed us dude coming with the flamethrower, I'm like, all right, bruh, so what was your plan? Like realistically, because you could have burned some niggas down, and how do you even explain that? Because it's not like you can just run away, throw it in your car, run away, and ain't nobody gonna say, "I don't know who had the flamethrower that left three burnt bodies on the ground." Like nigga, just get a gun. I, I, I just I get the exaggeration of it, but I was just like, all right, did somebody just had a free rental of a fr- a flamethrower, and they was like, all right. <laughs> Let's not do a gun. Let's not do a bow and arrow. Oh, shit. A flamethrower. You know how hot it looked outside? Can you imagine how hot and heavy that shit was to carry? Nah. I mean, it just had to, it had to be super outlandish, but it made me think about Atlanta. And just after watching Atlanta, I'm just here for all the, like, surrealism in Black TV. Like, why does it have to make sense? It doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't have to. It's just, and that's just where I'm, that's that's where I was at with the scene. So it wasn't like I said. It, and you couldn't repeat. You either had to re, again. You had to repeat that same exact scene to do something super outlandish because 
it's either gonna be it's gonna be hit or miss either way. So hey, take a risk um in this. And you see Jack, you know, he's driving a Porsche Carrera, and I'm just like, where is he? So he at, at some point he had some money or something no. with them. We we find out where it where it comes from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, they they make it back to the house. Excuse me. Um, and this is where we kind of have uh, they have this this conversation between them of them opening it up to each other, um, just having this this super. I feel like it was super well, not necessarily super deep, but it was how I feel. I feel like how men connect with each other. How did how did you feel about this them in the house when they was actually just conversing about everything? I personally enjoyed it because I'm always here and love and enjoy seeing movies and shows that give men their own space to communicate with one another without any form of judgment or without any form of negativity or violence towards them or within the situation or within that scene. So them just having a normal conversation, it was, I enjoyed it. I really did. Especially when you see um, Jeremy, it's just like, hey, go a pill, just take this. And then Kamal was like, you doing all this healthy stuff, but you taking pills. And he was just like, I'd rather not feel no pain. So you starting to learn more about each of the characters. And also when mm -hmm. Jeremy asks Kamal, are you seek are you uh do you have a therapist? Are you going to therapy? Like how many projects have you seen where you have two men talking to one another about therapy? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it introduced a safe conversation for them. And so mm -hmm. let me get your opinion as a black man, these kind of conversations, do you feel like you're able to have these with your male friends in spaces where you don't feel judged to where, you know, just comfortable in that space? Um, at, some, at one point I didn't. At one point I didn't and I actually went to therapy myself and I understood that the the necessity for it for black men. Um it's just so many different things or so many traumas we haven't discussed or haven't went over. So it, it is a huge thing. And I anytime I have a conversation, often now if like if I feel like if something happens to me, um, no matter how big or how small, if I have a conversation with people like, hey, have you been to therapy lately? And I'm just like, I, it's not, I don't think this is a situation where necessarily I need to go to therapy. It's just me either venting or me having a conversation. It's not, you know, like I'm not, every day is not going to be great. Every day won't be, um, you know, peaches and cream. And that's, and that's perfectly fine. Like I understand that and people have to understand it as well, but uh, mental health is you know I would say health is wealth like if you the, the better you are mentally a lot of things will fall into place so it's just you know just just having that and you know he went from mental well not mental he went from therapy and he went to just maybe just going to meditation and he said it's he said for me it's like he said I don't through all this all the, the bullshit and the job and that I do on the court he said I, I'm never really angry so he's like but that comes through meditation so that was something that he put on, not necessarily he put on him, but he introduced him to. Uh, and we see how that, you know, kind of changed um, throughout the, you know, throughout the movie, just just through their dynamic. Um, and, you know, he's in the kitchen, he's making a smoothie, he want to make him a smoothie so he can, you know, take that. He's he's really good. He's really good at his at what he's doing as far as right. like, I guess it's probably through just me probably help nursing himself or maybe his his teammates when he was in college. Um, you know, he went to Gonzaga. So that was, they have a big, big, big um, school. So they have all these different things that he probably was exposed to. Um, and he, you know, he tells us that the home that he lives in is one that his parents had or that he grew up in um, that they passed down, which I'm going to ask you about after I ask you this first question. Um, so I don't know, like, where you are as like, move like, romantic movies this year or just different things but you have this this like dope scene of when he asks him they're listening to music as he's doing and then he's kind of you can see you can see we can't see his foot tap up we can see his head bob into the music like he's just right. rocking 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 he said so do you listen to white music he was like i mean yeah he said like who he's like uh, the, the white guy with the, with the red hair Ed Sharan. he was like so tell me if 
he was playing, so the music was playing in the car. You pull up, you see some fellow black men over to the side. Are you going to A, turn it down, or are you going to keep on vibing to it? He was like, uh, I'm in love with the shape of you. Which is, like, that was just, that's funny to me, which when we get to the actual scene when this comes back, I'm going to bring it back up because it is something. But what, so Jay, I don't know, have you, do you experience this? Because I feel like this is a male thing. Do you, do you experience that? I feel like you, you can just play whatever and just not have a, a care in the world. Yes. <laughs> I'll be playing anything. Now, well, mm, so you mean like any kind of music? If I'm in my car. Yeah, if you out, if you like, so with you being in Tampa, I mean, I'm pretty, you probably have your windows up, air conditioner blowing, but see, me being a man, I got my shirt off, tank top on, because I, I got titties. Um, me- <laughs> <laughs> I got the music blasting. So I'm just, so I'm just going, I'm grooving. So it don't, but for me, you know, well, I don't, well, you may not, you don't know that, but for me, I've never cared what I play. Like, I'm the nigga. With Beyonce blasting at the highest decibel that I'm gonna have Gucci Mane blasting and I'm singing it to the top of my lungs no matter what light I've no matter where I pull up where I'm at that's not a situation for me so I didn't know if that was something that women experience I only can speak for myself but I haven't cared about anybody seeing what music I play since I was in high school maybe my lower years of college but if I'm going in regardless if I'm at a red light and people are around me they gonna have to see me going in and they're going to see me sing my heart out in this song. And you know, I be listening to sad, depressing shit. So I be in it. I be having a fake cry going. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> that shit be real. So be fake. I'm not going to lie to you. Some of them amp sessions. Once it get to 11, 12 o'clock at night, your boy be dropping a few. Uh, and you be music. falling asleep. Oh, Hey, sorry. Jazz. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> why you, why you telling my business? What's up with you? What's up with you? We flipping it now? What's up? 52 week? Now you now you want to flip what, what we telling people? 54. 54 weeks. And half of them probably done listen to the cameo session anyway. As soon as you hear that, hey, you're but, like, but truthfully, all right, we, we got to go back. Truthfully, truthfully, <laughs> I'm going to fall asleep no matter. Hey, I, there's some, I'm going to fall asleep no matter where I'm at. It don't matter. It, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Um, second question. Um, this home was passed down from jeremy's family how do you feel about how do you feel about that so I, I i mean i have two i mean kind of two different thoughts like this it's definitely i feel like i i don't, I don't think generational wealth is the, the proper term but i do know oftentimes you see it i see it more so in a white community where they pass something like that so their child doesn't have to struggle they don't have to think about or go through so different things this was weird to me because this wasn't a mm-hmm. house this was an apartment and he said mm-hmm. that the rent was cheap because they had been living there for so many years. Mm-hmm. But rent go up like almost every year. So I thought that was strange. Now, I have been in a situation where I stayed in an apartment for about three years and somebody moving in would have a starting value, maybe $100, $200 more than what I was already paying. But if you was living there since you were a kid, my nigga, that's like eight years. So it may have been a good deal where they were just like, oh, they was just like, oh, we're not going to charge you but we charge everybody else. But I wouldn't really classify that as generational wealth. I would just classify that as them niggas kept renewing a lease. Because he was <laughs> like he was paying rent, he wasn't paying no mortgage, and it, Got you. like the place wasn't paid off or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. so and and in that I don't know, like I, I so I truly don't know how that piece works of it, like within it, because I know it's different in different places. So with them being in L.A., I don't. So it could have been like you said, it could have just been him paying more rent to a place. I I truly don't know, uh, but I was just just curious because she definitely throw that shit back in his face later in that later in the movie. So I just wanted to bring it up. Um, so, uh, I think it probably would not have been an issue if it was a house and not an apartment. Yeah. And the only reason why I feel like that is because maybe she felt like he wasn't ready to make that next step in life. Mm. Now, I understood his logic. He's just like, I'm getting cheap rent here, so what's the point of leaving? But then also, it's just like, normally, 
the next step when you get in a relationship, y'all love each other, y'all want to take that next step, you want to try to buy a home to build a family. Or that's what society tells us, whatever. And so, <laughs> I mean, they do. So, I mean, it's just, she's probably, if you keep staying here and then also on top of the basketball dreams, mm-hmm. she's probably seeing all these different scenarios and things that he's putting his time and energy to, like, he's not moving forward. He's not going up the ladder. He's just in that same spot because it's what he's used to. It's what he wants. It's what he's familiar with. And she's just like, I'm Mm -hmm. getting opportunities, even though they might not be the best, but they're doors. They're Mm -hmm. doors opening for me. And we see when, how that unfolds. So, I mean, I kind of understood his view, but I really understood hers a lot more and respected hers more because I would have probably reacted the same way. Let me ask you this. So given everything, but what if he actually was working a job? He just wasn't making enough to be able to go beyond where he was. Would, Would that change your outlook on this situation? Is a job that he's working, is it something he's just doing or that's like his dream? So those are two uh, I different can't. things. So I, I mean, say, I mean, his dream was to go to the NBA. So okay. he couldn't. So he didn't make it to the NBA. He 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 got a job. He's working a job, and I mean, that's I I can't say if that's like because I mean. So I guess does, if that's the case, is he aspiring for more? Aspire. Uh, I mean, because I guess it's a situation that's, that's a, where. That's a, that's, that kind of, I mean, that kind of that kind of changes because I mean, I mean, I guess you can have a job. It's like I wish I was making more, but currently, right now, I'm not. So, given here, okay, so let's let's just look at Jeremy and his situation. He's not playing basketball. He's working a job, and he's doing his. He's trying to hustle his 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 his. his he's trying to hu- not hustle. But he's hustling, trying to train kids as a trainer. He wants to be a trainer, but he's also trying to sell his detox. That he has a job, he has a detox, and he has to train. Those are his jobs. How do you feel about this situation now? Because of course his aspirations was to go to the NBA, but that didn't that didn't pan out. He wants to be a trainer. That's his true, that's his true goal. But he has a job. Is is that change so, your outlook? None of those are none of those are stable situations of income. And I say that because you're training kids like, okay, but obviously. You get a parking ticket and you sit here like I can't even pay that. He don't got a job right now, so I I, I did add a job in this. Right, situation. so I, I uh, like so like you. Heard, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My thing is, do you have a consistent, consecutive form of income? Now, if it's not to where it's the standard that you want, but like I'm working towards an amount that you're working towards something. But if you just standing still and it's light this week and super light next week, that's a lot to bet on, which means if that's your partner, you have to work more to fill that void when they're having those super light weeks. Some people don't mind, but it depends on how long we've been together. But if you mm-hmm. think we about to start dating and you at that low low, jazz a no-no. Sorry, that might sound hella selfish, but... Cause that's a lot to deal with and to carry, you know what I mean. But I don't know how long they've been together. Obviously, they got they're getting married, so they've been together for a minute. But yeah, I just no, no, I get it, I get it. It's a, I mean, so oftentimes I do hear black women settle. Uh, so you have to go for what you want uh, in that situation. So I understand, I get, I understand where you're coming from. But it was just, I'm just curious in that, uh, given that situation. Uh, but the next thing. Uh, we got Ben Staples. We have the well before that. Kamal invites uh, Tatiana and Jeremy to his kid's birthday party. Uh, you know he pulls up. The name Why did he bring up. this Hennessy? <laughs> Why did he bring this Hennessy? He said that's his favorite drink. Are you bringing your favorite drink to a kid's party, or would you bring? Something Don't ask me that. This is the who, second who, time. Who, whose kid party is this? My kid or somebody else's kid? 
No, it's you were invited, so it's somebody okay. I was invited to somebody else's kid. kid. Mm. It was. Mm, it depends on the relationship I have with the the who who y'all playing to basketball be. together. Y'all been <laughs> y'all been hustling. What I'm bringing some. Guys? I'm bringing liquor for me and the, the me and the pop. So me and the the woman, whoever it is. So you bringing something like it's something you everybody gonna drink. I I am. I mean, I don't. But so, Jason, you I do don't drink. Some, so you I know, know I'm not gonna bring that. I'm bringing some. You know I what I'm know, saying? but the thing <laughs> is, like, he brought Hennessy to a black kid's party, <laughs> and you're white. I'm like, yo, Jeremy, read the room a little bit, because I mean, like, so when, what? What would be what? What would be the proper drink for him to bring if he's bringing the drink? Well, first off, to a kid's party, drink bringing liquor is kind of crazy unless you know it's other people out here drinking. Now, let's just say hypothetically, <laughs> the adults are going to be drinking at this event. Okay, cool. I probably will bring, ooh, that's tricky because I will bring tequila. But if I'm thinking, if I'm going to a predominantly white birthday party, I probably wouldn't take tequila. I would take vodka. And I don't even mm -hmm. fuck with vodka. Mm -hmm. I would get the cheapest vodka and bring it to the thing, to the event. And I'm That's also a, not spending a bunch of money on a bottle I'm taking to a party. Damn. I'm just showing my ain't shit. You, 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 you're, showing, you're showing you why you miss crabs. But look, so the difference mm. in white kids' parties and black kids' parties is the white kid parties they end on time. The black kid party turned into a grown folk function. Because that should be lit. You already got the venue, the space, the music, the DJ, and the kids is tired because they've been running around all day. Man, that's a I'm, two for one. Man, I was man, I was, man I was daughter to a birthday party on Sunday, well, a couple of weeks. Ago. Yeah, it was on that a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, oh, 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 it's ending. That's it. No, no music playing. There's no no drinks being get no. But Jason, that also yeah. depends on where the party at. If you at a park, <laughs> that shit ain't ending no time. But if you at like a venue, who's at the park, James? That's just not ending. On <laughs> shit, <yeah. laughs> I damn, they they stopped it right on time at a park. At the on time, it was there, but they were cleaning up. They were cleaning up like thirty minutes before. I was like, oh, I'm, man, that's, that was that was wild. That was wild. Which um, I'm just gonna put that out there now, since we're talking about kids. If I went to um, this is a part of the kid. Uh, she's 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 taking swimming lessons. Uh, she jumps in. We, we playing. I'm not in the pool. I'm not intending to get into the pool. I'm not intending to do any of these things. Jason had to get into the pool, headphones on, because my kid was kind of kind of kind of struggling a little bit. So I'm just like, oh, I have to come out here and protect you. I need you to wear Daddy is my king shirts every day for the rest of your life. Until I, you know, until I'm, you know, until I, I'm, I'm until I tell you not to, because like, you yeah, for the rest of her life, rest of her life, yeah, I, I protect, I, I, yeah, her mama brought her into this world, but I, I saved her, I jumped in there, she wasn't that, I said, I said, I asked her how many times you did that, none, oh, okay, but I also found out I was being a little, I ain't gonna say I was being careless, but I, I put a lot of trust in my child, like I was, <laughs> I was, I was allowing her to do some things. She shouldn't have probably been doing uh, at this pool, but yeah, I, I, I had to you know jump in. <laughs> yeah, you ain't the only person that can swim, Jazz. Had to jump in there, and protect the protect nigga. The you kid. can't float. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Which she can, so I didn't understand why she struggled. Be it's like, just that fear, cause you can. Is. That was it. That like was floating it. is just relaxing, but if you sitting here like the water about to get in my face, your float vibe is off. Trust me, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's happened to me multiple times in the ocean. I'm like, relax, jazz, relax. I gotta, I gotta learn. That's that's something I'm. That's that's my summer goal. Um, that's my summer goal to to learn to float. Okay. Um, but since we back at this this party, the, the one thing I that was thought that was super hilarious was Vince Staples. Um, which is speedy, is sitting at the table. He called out to his kid, hey, hey, come here, come here, come here. Uh, and give him some money. Hey, go get an eighth from your grandma. Please don't short me. And they put, <laughs> they pull off and uh, your boy Renzo pull up, eat some hot Cheetos. He was like, oh, it's, on, it's the dodie on the way, bro. And he was like, oh. And then, you know, he tries to. I would girl. not have touched his hand. I'm like, Tatiana, what are you doing? He just 
and it's covered. You can see it. You, you can, can see, see it. it. He didn't <laughs> cut it didn't come all the way off. She's like, okay. I'm like, uh, foolish. But Carmen. Damn Carmen. But then you see, like, now Jeremy has intertwined Kamal in his lies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Kamal said, oh, so now I'm a part of your lie now. And Kamal was trying to get him a donut. And it was like a uh, jelly field. And then here go Jeremy. Ah, uh, you wouldn't be on my detox program eating that. He's like, shit, you right. And then he took it out of his mouth, put it on a table. Whoa, 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 whoa. So do you think it was good? It, it couldn't have been that good, though, Jazz. I think it wasn't that good. That's the why donut? It out. Yeah, I don't think it was good. Regardless if it was good or not, why he didn't throw that shit in the trash? Why you put on the table? <laughs> Those are details I'd be looking at, Jason. I'd just be like, a kid could come and eat that. And then you might have germs. And how you think COVID spread so fast? I agree. Not from us, though, because, you know. But, um, <laughs> now nah, he should have put that in the trash. I, you know, but, I guess he was at the park. He, he didn't feel like there was a necessity uh, from there. But, he, you know, they, they him and Jeremy, they talking. Uh, peeps out to the side. We see uh, Kamal's dad is there, Benji. Uh, he's in a wheelchair. Find out he has MS. Uh, it sounds he said he found what it happened the same exact night that he was arrested. Uh, so, you know, dad pulls up on him and he's having a conversation with him. And dad, I guess he was just big into sports. He said he knew who Jeremy was, which was dope. Uh, that he said, I, I look at all big time ballers, and he was like, Y'all have a lot in common that you y'all probably don't even know it's just shit. And they started talking every time they said something, it was like they finished each other's word, but like in a slick, disrespectful way toward the other one. It was like, Yeah, y'all more common than y'all even think. Uh, how did you what do you think about this scene? I was, I'm not gonna lie, because I honestly thought that his father passed away due to uh. And which is why he wasn't able to go to school because maybe he lashed out because his father wasn't there. So to see his dad roll up, no pun intended, to the party, I was uh, I was like, okay, a positive, but he was sick. And I thought this scene was also funny because he was just like, dad, can I get you something to drink? He was like, let me get some of that, hen that Henny. And then here go Jeremy. You want me to drive the boat for you? <laughs> Yo, if Kamal didn't say nothing, his dad was going to be like, I mean, yeah. That would be wild. Yes. You talk about wild. range, Jazz. Dude got range. Because I'm just thinking about, like, this, like, it, I've seen, like, since, you know, we had The Wire, we had, the, you know, John Wick and just different stuff. I see, oftentimes, I see him as a city, like, super serious. And then I'm watching this show, Always Sunny, um, in Philadelphia. He was on there. And I'm just like, bro, wait, that, that is not the dude I'm used to. And I'm seeing him in here. I'm just like, bro, what is this dude doing? I think it's so, unfortunate and it's hard to cut you off because I remember mm -hmm. when you said earlier how a lot you were speaking on like comedians aren't able to get too many serious roles to show their talent to show their range. But I also nice. think right, that's all I'm talking that's all I'll be talking okay, about. Okay, gotcha. I just to make it sure. They know. You should know. <laughs> but <laughs> I also want to say like the actors that are normally in serious roles don't get too many comedy roles. Because I recently, well, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I saw um, like a post online where it was saying Angela Bassett would love to do a comedy. I was, I saw an interview with Angela Bassett and I believe it was for, uh, I think it was with Kiki Palmer, but it okay. might not have been with Kiki, but she was referring to her uh, skit in Black Lady Sketch Show mm -hmm. and Angela Bassett was in the first season. And so sketch show, funny comedy. And so she was had an amazing skit in that. And she was just like, I enjoy doing that. You remember what I'm talking about? No, I want to see her and Denzel in the comedy. Oh, Denzel in the couple. comedy. As a couple. Can Viola and somebody else be the other couple in that? That'd be I, cool too. We could do but, like a old, not, I don't want to say old couple. Don't say truth, old. But like, I know I wasn't trying to, but like you give them, ooh, maybe even her and her husband. It may be. Right. It, oh and, God, yes. And, Denzel, and Angela. Angela and her husband, they can be one couple. Viola and Denzel can come back together as husband and wife. You know, he ain't gonna do her like he did her offenses. No, nah, we're not we doing do that. that. We're not doing that again. But yeah, that'll be in the comedy though, because Denzel, I, I feel like he always. I want to see him, you know, do that. Like his, he has movies where he has like comedic timing, I guess, but an actual right. 
all the way through just like what that's, the hell that's what i'm saying i just would love to see actors like denzel angela bassett viola davis in comedies to where they're having fun and it's not anything serious or drama filled or anything like that and so i remember she said she would love to do more comedies love to get those kind of opportunities so do you, like, is it did she did she say if it was a choice or is that just what it comes to her i think it might be something that's offered to put like um because i feel like if angela was just like look give me that comedy script who's saying no i mean i wouldn't say no to angela mm -hmm. i would write a, a comedy script for angela right now do it you right i gotta finish my other ones though but i i just it was just something like that because like in that black lady sketch skit uh black lady skits you know what i'm trying to say she was just like say it three times fast black lady sketch show black lady sketch show black lady sketch show bam fuck with it but um <laughs> <laughs> nah but she was just like it's okay to be a um a okay bitch and it was like what she was like but you don't want to be a basic basic bitch i was like okay okay angela like that was so funny and it was released like a few years ago so i'm just like can we get her in some funny stuff please but yeah we need that we need that and it's just it's just dope to see them in those roles because we know those dark we know those dark roles take so much out of them mentally right. and emotionally to to be able to do them so and then also want to uh add we see the actor um from snowfall uh, is it Derek Desmond? Um, what's his last name? Jason Franklin. That Damn place. Damn yes. He said that last season took a lot out of him. Like he was having nightmares every night. So you had just hearing the stories that these actors go through to portray these roles. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. And so get him some light, please. Cause <laughs> Yeah, they need they need it. They definitely need it. Um, uh, so you know, after after this, you know, we got the next scene. Jeremy and his you know girl they're sharing the good news that they that they have. Of course, Jeremy's lying about his good news. I mean, he's he's is he's making some money, but he's definitely lying about how he's getting his money. Um, uh, but she has this this meeting with Sis, uh, which she said is significantly less. So he's going to have to carry the load. Uh, for the house, which he definitely is trying to put it on his back to a certain extent. Uh, but, I, you know, in that situation, it's one of those, you know, the experience is probably going to be worth more than, uh, you know, taking the money in that situation, which at times you do need. Sometimes you may need somebody that can back you in that situation, which is, I mean, that's I feel like that's how it should be. If you can, if a person can get that experience, which it obviously it pays off. Um, in her situation, which is it's a risk. It's a risk on both sides, but you can't both be in that risk mode at the same exact time because shit still needs to be paid. Like they still need to be taken care of. Um, did you have a? Did you have a something to touch on? In that? Nah, I completely agree. Because it's just like she already let him know she's communicating with him. This opportunity is great, and I liked in this scene how supportive he was for her. And I feel like this scene, he was the most supportive of her, even mm -hmm. though he was lying, but he was just like, you got this. He was betting so much on that game, mm -hmm. which I get, but it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous to put so many eggs in a basket that you don't have yet. You don't have that money yet. You ain't won those games yet. So even though that's a goal, you haven't achieved it. So don't even try to think, oh, that money is mine. I'm going to use it to get this and this. Like, yeah, you can, like, but it ain't yours yet. It ain't in your bank account yet. So it's just, because then if you don't get it, all of those plans you had, you was betting on something that didn't even come through, which, oh, <laughs> kind of happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they head to Watts. They head over to Watts, and he kind of told them, hey, Watch your mouth. This is not the place to do all that 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 talking that you do. And the first thing he comes up to me, he starts whispering, buckets. Buckets. <laughs> and I was huh? like, what? 
<laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie, do ears was crazy. Like, put a do rag on to try to lay him down a little bit, cause he like he's about to fly away. I was like, hey man, man. oh that's wrong. Hey, my bad. That's now nah, that was now nah, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. It was like, man, I was just trying to see if you can hear me with them super sunk ears. <laughs> Shit was crazy. <laughs> And then he said, you know, like he said, he makes a he tries to make a shot, he misses, and he was like, like did those things mess up your equilibrium? Like, like your whole balance seems kind of like off. He's like, like at least Dumbo can fly. Like, what do yours do? Like, just going in on this dude. <clears throat> if, if your ear is that big and you being street ball, you need to have a gun on you or a <laughs> flamethrower. No guns, no oh. flamethrowers. Oh. Just better jokes. What are we doing, Jazz? Why oh, are you sorry. Violence? Like, what? <laughs> I was hey, I was trying to match the movie of the uh the energy <laughs> of the movie. I mean, I they gotta go higher than a flamethrower though. So like a uh, a rocket launcher. Ooh, like a 007. Mm. Or like a proxy mine. As soon as they go back to the uh to the court, that shit blow up. Mm. No, that's too violent. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> we got our course. Wrong what is wrong with you? <laughs> You was with it. You was like, nah, proxy mine do sound lit. I do. <laughs> One of my favorites. I used to kill so many people with that you shit. set people up, make, make somebody chase you, put some bombs down, and they come. <laughs> yeah, nah, that was it. I'm lit. Um, but they, you know, they pretty much, they take, of course, they win at this court. Um, the lady has to pay her, her boyfriend's fees and tell him to get his purse sound like a little kid. He's walking off. Uh, walking off the court, um, and you know as they they start driving down the street, you know he hands him he he makes a drink for specially made for Kamal. Um, I guess he's learning him a lot more. He gives it to him. He's enjoying it. Um, and they start you know they, they start going to the court. He's like man, we so good, we can let them pick our team. We'll still win. What do you think about this first team they put together? <laughs> well, I thought it was funny because like the dude with the shades. He's like, take those fucking shades off. He said, don't touch them or you'll die. And his blocking, ridiculous. But it was funny. And then the fact that he made that shot at the end, of course, that was that, that I would have made him. I would. I would have made him stop playing. I would have made. I would, I would kick them off my team. Like when Why? the person that look, I'm not the. I'm not the best basketball player. But when I see the person take the shot, and it hits off the backboard and goes in. Like not even in the mid, not even in the square, off the side of the back. I I know there was some bullshit they just threw up there. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I was just like, y'all still winning. Like they had somebody fresh off their bike uh, route that was in there playing. Like, can you with imagine a, with a GoPro on? Right, I know that footage was lit. Mm -hmm. He didn't get the ball though, so I don't know how lit it could have been. Yep. And so, um, damn, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I don't even know what I was about to say. Uh, this is when he, uh, after they won the game, come on, after he left, he started meditating. This is like the first game he Well, he, started he screamed meditating. in the air first. He had a good little good scream. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He did. I'm mad because he was playing all this basketball. He wasn't shirtless at all. I feel like that's selfish. <laughs> that's just me. Because I'm sitting here like I see the arms. I see the potential. Why can't I see the full thing? Kenya, <laughs> explain yourself. But I thought the meditation scene was cool because then you see Jeremy looking from a distance laughing because they had that exchange when they were in Jeremy's house. He's mm -hmm. like, I don't meditate. That's what white people do. And he was like, are you meditating? He was like, I think so. He was like, and your skin's still black. I'm like, that chocolate bed not go nowhere. That's what I would have said if I would have. But now nah, he got a black queen. I support black love. So I'm like, nope. You do. You do. Um, you know, this is when Jeremy, you know, I guess he wants to. I feel like he was about to reveal what's been really going on. So he bought this gift. Sim, he bought a, he bought a little ballerina dancer, which he asked. Um, the guy can he get a white man trying to support black culture discount? Which mm, nigga please, nigga please, no, that's not that's that doesn't roll over here. That's not what we do. 
<laughs> that's like, not not at all. We trying to we try to make money. We're not into to 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 make friends. Um, this is a, I feel like this this scene kind of mirrored when uh, Woody's character in the original he lost all his money and he tried to buy her a dress to make up for to lighten the blow before it actually happened. So he in the car with her. Um, he gives her the gift, and this is another scene that comes from the original movie. He's driving in the car, and she sits on his lap as he's driving. He's just like, "Wait, you know, I like, I, I prefer, I like safe sex, so I'm not, I'm, I'm, I like to drive safe, I like to be safe in the car." But we, we're in the moment of spontaneity, so you got to kind of allow things to happen. I've never had this happen to me before, though. It looks, but it's like a dope, dope out of town moment in Little Rock. They probably would be cute, but out of town, they probably be fired. Who's town? Like y'all could die. <laughs> hey man, you gotta live. We gotta live a little bit. Not if you die doing this <laughs> shit. I'm just sitting here like that's that just looks crazy dangerous. Like while the car is moving, maybe like five miles per hour, that might be a vibe. But he was on like a city road. I'm like, all right. <laughs> um we catch up, you know, these they get they get ready to go to the to the big the big tournament. League, the big tournament. Uh where they make twenty five thousand if they win. Uh, so we, we meet Speedy's brother finally, uh which was uh, I can't even think of his name no more. I, I forgot what he was in. He looks familiar. He's in a lot of things. Uh but that's, I'm gonna call him Black G's because that's what I know him. That's what I know him from. He's also in uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Uh, so we meet Peter Brother. We, you know, he told us he was selling pit bulls, but he said now nah, he's a spectrum. Shout out to Chris because he mentions what you know spectrums in Florida, and uh, that's what took over for Time Warner. Uh, we see he works for Spectrum. And he used to sell pit bulls. He's like, nah, nigga, them were Frenchies. They weren't pit bulls. <laughs> uh, and then uh, he, you know, he asked, not well, Renzo asked Speedy, "Where is uh Mildred?" And he was like, "Nah, she, we on, we on the break right now." Uh, is this, is this no, 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 no. She at the DMV, and he was like, "Why is she at the DMV?" He was like, "Animals can't drive." He was like, "You need to stop doing that. <laughs> you gotta stop doing her like that." He was killing her the entire movie. <laughs> the entire every movie. time, every time. Uh, but Jeremy pulled up. And these Kyoto's, uh, these blue Kyoto's, which I feel like they would be fire. I'm mean, I need to look into them and probably too much for my blood for just some from sandals, more than likely. I mean, just start a GoFundMe. We'll then... see. <laughs> we'll see. If, we'll see how that works out for me. See if that works out for me. But um, you know, Kamal kind of he he seems out of it. This entire the entire time when they make it from when they make it to when they get to the court. Um, and you know, Tiana or Imani character, uh, she kind of tells us that you know, he hasn't played organized ball since that night he was arrested. Um, we, you know, we had this basketball game that do trash, um, that was 25 racks they just lost in this basketball game. But we have like the, the blow up in the previous movie was, um, I think they he got hustled by him, but in this one, they didn't they didn't go that route in this scene. How did you feel about this this climax of the movie? I actually enjoyed it um, and it made a lot of sense because him not playing organized ball in that many years and I, it's a lot you know you used to just doing um, you know playing in the gym or hustling somebody to where it's not really much regulation but now you got all these people around you got a crowd and it's regulated and so he's just having flashbacks. And he also mentioned to um, Tiana's character, like, don't tell my dad because mm -hmm. I don't want him to, you know, to get too excited and all of this stuff. So he was just basically trying to keep that from his father. And then you see Jeremy, since he's about to go up against Philip Wilmans Williamson, who was his <laughs> arch nemesis, In his the head. one that he cre created. But we see sometimes, you know, you might have a nemesis out there and not know until they pop up, mm -hmm. as we saw in Across the Spideyverse. Yeah. So you just never know. 
But um, and it was just like they was just like you said, they wasn't on their shit. So when Kamal choked Jeremy out, I was like, <laughs> damn, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that didn't look like it was fake. That shit looked legit. And like he oof, all his muscles, and I'm like, you mean tell me I couldn't oh. get no shirtless scene with this man? Like nothing. But that scene, it was it was really intense. And I was just like, whoa. And we see the aftermath from that. And he was just like, go back to his job. He was like, man, fuck you and fuck that job. He said a job's name. And of course, everybody's recording. And it gets back to his job. Mm. So breaking a phone will have you lose hours. Saying fuck your job will have you what, Jason? (laughs) Out of a job. (laughs) Out of a job. (laughs) Man. Um, How did you feel about the exchange with his manager during this scene? Because it's very comical. I've been I've been in that situation. I've had to terminate people, uh, so I know how it is. Especially when that's why they say you you know you don't really have friends in the job. So when you start trying to when you begin doing that, it makes the situation a lot a little a bit harder or a bit awkward when you come to a situation where you have to let a person go. Uh, but I, I understood where he come where he came from. Where he was just like, you know, I didn't want to do it over the phone. I want you to come in. Uh, and I even told them, hey, you know, uh, that's my guy. That's my friend. I've offered him weed. He was like, oh, shit. So, Jason, since you fired people before, how many have you fired that you offered edibles to prior? Uh, prior to that? Mm, that's probably... Don't answer. Don't incriminate yourself at all. That's not what we're here for, but we see. Don't incriminate yourself. Nah, I've never done that. I've never done that. Nah. Uh, But of course, this this fallout, you know, it it goes two ways. Um, So Jeremy also gets it. He's like, man, I'm at the gym. This kid tripping now. He started choking me like the trail is pretty well, which was a wild wild, wild moment in NBA history. Um, Because that did really happen, but of course, this is a viral moment. So he, she gets her phone, she sees it, and she's out of there. Fuck you, nigga. What you thinking? So I mean, it it was inevitable because he was lying, and we know, you know, all things that happen in dark oftentimes come out. This is where I would have threw the frying pan <clears throat> because the way he left out of this apartment, I would have snapped. I didn't understand that. I'm like not going to even just, lie to you. Like you just left. You didn't say nothing as if you weren't coming back home. And she's packing, getting ready to leave you. And you just like, let me just leave. Oh, yeah. I w- was this a reach to say this was kind of comparable to in the a previous movie when she asked about that cup of water? Because I, I felt like this was what no, they were trying to. It is a I, reach. It's a no, reach. I feel like I, 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 I feel like it was they were trying to go with that because it was a thing of her saying you don't show appreciation for what I'm doing. Like you're not even your only your only question in the middle of this conversation was when am I returning? You never show you was happy for me because I took the gig. It was no celebration that I took the gig. It was just more of a when are you going when when are you going to be back for me in this situation? I mean. I guess I can see how you can see the comparison because in the original he also left, but he was also oh, shit, justified. He, did leave. he left her in the house and he took all his he, shit. But then he, he threw came water back. In her face. Yes, in the bed. <laughs> Another scene. Why? Why don't she none of these women have a frying like, pan? She said, "Let's fuck." Right after that, though. She first said, "Let's make love," and then she was just like, "I hate when you say let's make love. I like when you say let's fuck." But either way, she was, Glory was very toxic in that movie. But, um, and this, he was completely wrong because Uh, I'm just sitting here like, you got caught lying. And then you sitting up here talking about you got me on Google? No, bitch. You're on all the social media platforms because your ass got choked out because you have been lying to me for three fucking months. And it's probably not three months, it's probably only three weeks. But let me exaggerate this shit so it gets <laughs> more impactful. <laughs> and then I get a great opportunity and you over here like, so wait, you just gonna leave? You normally let shit sizzle for a bit before you make decisions, but no bitch, 
I got a call from SZA, so ain't nothing on SZA. I'm fucking leaving because you out here lying to me. And for her to even come out and say, like, I have been putting my dreams on hold because I didn't want to leave you behind? Oh, you better than me, sis, because I would have left that motherfucker a long time ago. And I know it might sound like I'm very aggressive in my vocals. It's because I'm fake passionate about this. Like but, your, your, your bone popping out. You are passionate about this. Is it? Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, that's that old age. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like in this scene, I was just sitting here like with her even trying to talk to you and you just walking out. I, man, I wouldn't have came back. I mean, maybe I would have if I was a little in love with him for real, for real, but... Rosie Luff. <laughs> I mean... Uh, so, I, Gloria, I Gloria honestly Luff. thought this movie was going to end that same way, and I was hoping that it did because she would have been more than justified. But time and calming and a change of behavior of you realizing you was wrong and your faults can fix <laughs> that entire thing. And $100,000. And a hundred thousand dollars. So, <laughs> but I mean, you you would fix your you fix your attitude. All right, whatever. It, it I'm what still gonna is. give him hell, but I'm gonna be like, send me some of that cash though, please. I'm gonna say please because I got manners. But <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I'm just like when she threw his pills, and he had the audacity to come back into the house, pick up his pills, and then leave. And then he gonna be crying outside the fucking window while she's leaving. Yeah, he was he was wilding. He was wilding. He he had lost his mind. But we um we kind of catch back up with Kamal. Um, we see we get the full story finally. Um, as to why he's the way he is. Um, we find that his mom left him. Uh, left his dad, which also in I mean in turn him. It's, it's him as well. And he's just looking at you know they they both looking over there their careers and different things over their life and just, you know, where they are, where they were, where they are now. Just, just, just a little, you know, nice montage. Um, did we? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. And it's, um, Cause then and then we, it come up. Huh? No, I was just going to say, and then we, uh, we see Jeremy at the gym and he's drinking. Yeah, Jeremy is drinking as his friend told him not to while he's taking those pills as his friend told him not to. I told you, you got to trust the drug dealer. Sometimes you got to trust him. He wasn't, he wasn't telling, he didn't tell the man nothing wrong. Uh, Nobody should have to tell you not to take pills with alcohol. <laughs> but that's right. what people do nowadays. To, well, to pull an extra do kick. Little, people do you a right. lot of shit these days. If, the, shit. if they were, if they were jumping off the bridge with you too, shit, what are they jumping to? No, no, let me stop playing. I, I'm not, I'm not. Wait, I should know that <laughs> reference, <laughs> but I don't know it. That's Please. just a mom. That's just that's just mom and daddy. That's truly that's just mom and daddy. Oh, that right. Would you if they jumped off the bridge? If they jumped the bridge, off you too? do it too. Yeah. Not why that. was? Why did I go back to? I think it was our Atlanta episode or our Stranger Things where we were talking about jumping off a bridge, and I think I said I would come save you, but she was like, "But you can't swim." <laughs> so that's where I went. I I can swim now. Hey, I got you. I got you, but you got me because I ain't got you. Just throwing it out there right now. Uh, <laughs> um, and so Jeremy, like I said, he said he in the gym, he bullying people, uh, he being a real, real dick, and Kamal kind of pull up, try to apologize for how he treated him. Um, but he, you know, snapping out, told him he made him a meme. His girl left him. Like you gonna make me the problem, and you was lying to your girl. Make that make sense, bro. Kamal was basically telling him throughout the entire movie, every time he found out about a new lie that Jeremy had him wrapped in, where he was telling Tatiana, he was just like, every time Jeremy was like, just don't tell her about the hustle and the basketball and the mm -hmm. stem cell, he was like, oh, very healthy relationship. <laughs> it's like, you're lying to your girl. Like, nah. But you see, Kamal, every time anything came up, he always communicated with wifey. Yeah. Tiana. Yeah. So uh, I definitely appreciated seeing that. Mm -hmm. And even when he at some points lashed out, she was this like, it? uh uh. You go ahead. This is right here. Cause uh basically he was told her like, I lost my job. She didn't snap on him, she didn't overreact. She said, So what we about to do? I almost cried. I ain't gonna lie to you. I said. fucking loved her in this movie. I, and I, I almost said, cried. Cause you don't see I don't 
I can't like I've had different people. Um, because I'm, I'm not gonna I don't know if it's a soft love, but it's an understanding love. I feel like, you know, what I'm saying because it's in most situations people feel to be snapping like nigga, you lost your job. Yeah, you know what the fuck we trying to do. You know what the fuck I got going on. You know what the fuck I'm doing, and she didn't do that. And I've had one. I think I've had one person where I've I've gotten out of line. And they checked me like, hey, we don't, we never talk like that to each other. And we not about to start now. And she did that to him. And I was like, that's so dope just to see that. I mean, to have somebody like that in your life is very important. To where if it's somebody that is a friend, somebody that you're romantic with, somebody that's a family member, that's the kind of person you want to have in your corner. Because once you get off track, even a little bit, they about to put your ass back where you're supposed to be. (laughs) <laughs> like point blank period and it's like you have to appreciate those kind of people because mm-hmm. she was just like what are we about to do she didn't even and then she started coming up with solutions and even though it was solutions that he did not want she was like well what the fuck you want then she was like I don't know what you want so what are we about to do because you can't just be out here and not have a job we got a family we got a goal we got shit to do mm-hmm. so we are, she was like, I don't want to be doing people's hair in my house, but that's what I have to do. And I've definitely come across situations being involved with individuals close to me where it was a lot of things they did not want to do. They didn't feel like they should have done or they thought they were too good to do that shit. Yeah, we getting, we getting there. And it's one of the things to where it's just like, my nigga, we've all been in that kind of situation. Depending on who you are, you're going to have to start at the bottom level to get to where you need to be. Humble yourself immediately. Handle your fucking business because it'll make you appreciate your shit on the other side. And stop trying to use other people or get shortcuts and shit because a lot of people try to do that. And so, back to the movie. And it was just like, she just told him like, you know, what you trying to do? Because she could have hooked him up trying to see if her homegirl had a job. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I didn't even want to work where I was at. She was like, my nigga, then what you fuck you want? You walking around here upset all the fucking time until recently when you started getting back into your ball. But like it's we need solutions. Yeah. Here go a problem, but let's you got one problem. Let's find out three to five solutions for that. Because sitting here sad and weeping over it, you ain't gonna get no solutions from that. But you have people that do that. Then you have people that be like, all right, this ain't gonna hold me down for long. So, yeah, I enjoyed yeah. her character in this, and I think she was very pivotal to the story, to this movie, and every scene that she was in. Yeah, I absolutely nah, love the energy she was bringing. Yeah, no, nah, she was dope, super dope. Got to, I got to, I got to watch that movie that she actually put out, right? Um, yeah, just to see how that, see how she does in that. Just as a, I mean, because I've seen her in things. Um, but she's been more, I think, more supporting. Uh, she was a lead in one of those, like Step It Up movies or Honey Three or whatever. One of the movies she was a she was a lead in. I I don't know which one it was. I watched it. It was all right. Uh, but you know, in the midst of this, unfortunately, we get the call. Um, Dad's in the hospital. He's not doing. He's not looking good. Um, you know, he pulls up. You know, he's speaking to him. Um, and I love this as well. Like, and maybe this is something I probably because I want this. Um, not the no personal shots in that, but it was just um, him, his dad telling him, you know, I I want to apologize for not preparing you better for different things. Like, I don't want you to feel like you were you were disappointed to me or you failed. It was it things happened. So when it didn't happen, I should have prepared you for what's what what needs to come next or what comes next. And he kind of told his dad, it's not only like it was, you know that was something that we shared. It was something that you taught me. It was you the one, you know, he felt, his dad said, I, I took away the joy of basketball. He was like, you didn't take it from me. You gave me the game and I still love it because it's something that you gave to me. Um, but yeah, man, yeah, again, so much to put in Lance. I hate that the, 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 the past few roles that he's been given have been mirroring life because he did, unfortunately, he passed away this year. Um, in like the last few roles I've seen him in, he's passed away on TV, so it's, it's hit a bit differently um, right. in it. But I've appreciated each role that he's had. Um, and what, what did you think of you know that scene? There? I thought this scene was extremely powerful. 
on so many levels because you got to see two black men, a father and a son be vulnerable with each other. And it's not to where drama is related, but just experiences growing up and mm -hmm. him being there for his son at a young age and him taking accountability for where he felt like he fell short as a father for his son and his son communicating and letting him know because of you, I love this game. I want to see more of that. And I was talking to my best friend recently about this movie because we were both talking. It's like, this movie, regardless if you enjoyed it or not, you cannot say this movie did not depict positive Black relationships mm. with the husband and wife and then the father and the son. Because a lot of movies where it has us in there, there's some type of drama, there's some type of crime normally intertwined in there. This movie shows so much positivity. I love it. And I love, I, I hope we get to see more of it, you know, and it wasn't any kind of shame in the emotions. And I also want to say in the next scene, it represented brotherhood because his homeboys were there at the hospital. It's like, how your dad doing? And then what was the, uh, Renzo. Should, what was his name? Renzo. Renzo. Soon as Renzo saw Kamal, he gave him a hug. Cause he's just like he's his father. Eating. He was, and but you know what? He he gave his homeboy a hug. He gave he his did. brother a hug. So it's just those kind of things being seen in art. You know what I'm saying? It's just like we can mm -hmm. sit up here and say we see it sometimes in our real lives, but we don't really see it on the screen. This movie shows so much of it, mm -hmm. which I feel like the impact is big. And for anybody, it's just like look at this movie outside of the original and just go into it and enjoy it it's so it's filled with so much positivity nothing triggering and it ends on such a positive successful note you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so i just i just love that i think the scene was great it was. i said yeah. all of that just to say i think the scene was great <laughs> <laughs> no i love it i appreciate that because it's definitely you're right it's that's a different outlook the positive outlook um, from those different relationships, from your homies to your your wife, the one in your home, your father, like just that, just seeing that is you. We need to see that. We like you said, it's it's oftentimes we depicted. Um, you know, we know everybody's flaws. So I'm not gonna even talk about him being angry. That was to me is justifiable anger. Like in that situation, like if I'm bad game, bad life, things happen, moments happen. Unfortunately, we get defined by those moments. Typically, Black men get defined, Black people get defined by a moment in their life and they can't let it go while Ezra Miller keeps living his life. But anywho, um, so <laughs> within this, the homie was like, you know, there's a tournament where they can get the $5,000, $500,000 if they play in it, but they need the 7500 to get into it. Um, his homeboy is like, hey, you know, <laughs> I was, hey, you get the VTX shorts. I got a homie that can Photoshop your stuff a bit, a little bit larger than what it really is, and we can get it popping. <laughs> like, like you, you, you subscribing, Jeff? What's, what's up? Hell yeah! And I'll be <laughs> honest, from how he looking, like he probably don't even need that extra in this because black <laughs> men is blessed. Black <laughs> men is blessed. So. But no, I'm subscribing for sure because you know I support black owned businesses. Hey, you are done. You are ignorant. You are ignorant. What you mean? I, f I feel you. I feel you. Let Beyonce, Lotto, Cardi B. Uh, it's one more. You don't even know who your list are. That's crazy. I don't. I I, I lose it. Summer Walker. That one is one. I that's my that's my fault. That's why I need to add another person. It, either, it, I'm gonna rotate in between Kiki. Palmer and Kyla Pratt. One of them, they gonna be them them two gonna rotate on my my, my top five. Like yeah. yeah. Do I got a top five? I'ma say Yaya for sure. For sure. Uh, of course, uh Trevante Rhodes. And I gotta put Daniel in there from Insecure because that chocolate just be chocolating. I'm gonna put my young brother in here that's uh in this movie as well. So that's the core. <laughs> I feel like I gotta put a light skin in there, but I don't be listening <laughs> over light skin men like that no more. Damn. So I ain't gonna worry about the light skin nigga. So <laughs> damn it was you said somebody... 
I did say Travante. Okay, I'm making sure. I'm not going to lie. This would have been back in like uh, January, February. You know, majors would have been on there, but I I, I, see, I, see I, I I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. I'm I just going to roll with my four. Let me get it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just made the fourth one up, the fifth one up on my, on my list on the fly, so I get it. Um, but Tiana, man, again, she pulls up. I got five racks of my dude. Y'all need to figure out the 2500 on y'all side. And they like, what we going to, you know, we going to get that? He like, nigga, go ask Mildred. He was like, we on the break. Like, she thought gift giving was my, my love language, but it's really physical touch. <laughs> it's important to know your partner's love language. It is. That's it extremely is. important. But, but I, I mean, we, we also need y'all to know all those love languages matter. No love. Like, regardless of whatever the test said, whatever the test tells you, all of them matter to an extent. I mean, yeah, because even though if his love language is touch, it's okay to spoil him a little bit. Be like, "Bay, I got your favorite candy bar with a new sex toy." <laughs> oh, oh, that went, <laughs> oh, that went, all right, that went left. My bad. Hey, spice it up. You know what I'm saying? You got a Twix and a rabbit. Let's go. Like, wait, what? Like, at what point are we? Which one am I using first? Like, it's gonna be one of the things that got to get fully installed. Like, all right, you install that on Friday night after work. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I definitely want to touch on the fact that uh, Kamal was just like, I don't want you to bet your all your, your salon money on the game. And she said, I'm not betting on the game. I'm betting on my husband. I said, yes, Black Love. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. 5K on your husband? That's love. Because she, she was just like, nah. Because I want you to go out there and win that game so they know Use him. Or she you that said, nigga. Did she say you that nigga? Is yeah. that what? Okay. To where I'm just like, that's the kind of wife, that's the kind of lady you need to have. It, fellas, I would want you to have in your corner. One that's about to support you. All of us, all of them, I ain't going to have 4K just sitting over there <laughs> having better. <laughs> but even if it's $5, 50 if sis like, bae, I got you, and she's contributing a little something, something, that's support. I'm just saying. Now she got a she got five k in the bank and she's like here go five dollars. You might not be her number one, maybe number eleven. You stupid. I'm just saying you can't give number eleven five k. Jason, <laughs> he got to work up to that. He got to replace everybody ahead of him. Yeah, but, he got to he got to come with it. He definitely got to come with it. Um, but they you know they pull up to the basketball park. You know they you know talking. Um, but then you, you know, they, she wishes her husband luck, but then you hear, I'm in love with the shape of, I'm in love with the shawty. <laughs> I'm going to hate to see that one day. I love I'm gonna that hate song, to see that but one day. damn, that's what he was doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this. Um, this is, I feel like, a it's called a romantic gesture. Um, you oftentimes see it in a, 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 a like rom com. Romantic, romantic comedy. So this is up there. Um, I watched this movie called Right Lane. There's a there's a, a beautiful moment in there. There's something that comes up in the beginning and at the end it happens. And it was just like, no, they're not going to do this. They're not going to do this moment. And there's just that's how I felt when I seen it. I was like, oh. That's nice. Like it was just like him, you know, him him doing that and you know, have you know, me and him like seeing if he's gonna turn it up or he's gonna turn it down. And they kept it turned up the entire time when they had their 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 apology. They finally had this apology in this moment. Did you you feel like this was um a an appre would you have appreciated this moment from someone or a friend that you fell out with? Absolutely. Cause like if I had a friend that rolled up and some Ali was playing. Especially oh, with some Aaliyah with like choreography. Man, fuck out of here. Somebody Hell snapped that somebody. This is a, mm, 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 Jason. Mm, mm, mm. Who? Who? Yes. What? <laughs> Look, are you that somebody? Uh, uh, uh. Mm, 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 mm. I would have done that in the middle of the motherfucking street and be like, we cool again. Like, yeah, of course. Like, <laughs> no hesitation. But no, I, I definitely, um, I like this scene. I like that it called back from the earlier part of the movie where he was just like he knows that Kamal rocks with Ed Sharon so 
I thought it was cool. Yeah. I appreciated that as well. But they finna get ready to start this game and they run into a little murder again. Another call back to the beginning of the movie. Uh so we, you know, we see well, he was in the movie previously, so we hadn't seen him since he got hit. Why not when you said earlier in the movie I was thinking of the original and I'm like, I don't remember a scene like this in the original, but you were talking about this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this gotcha. movie. Like in the original, the guy that pulled the gun, he was in the at the end, he was just in the crowd. Uh he was in that tournament in the tournament too, but they just they sucked, so it, it didn't matter where they was at in the tournament. Um, so we we get ready to, to start this basketball game. Um, you know, of course, Kamal kind of tell them what they need to do and what they don't need to do um, in this in the situation. Uh, you know, they going crazy. Uh, Renzo getting beat uh, under the goal. Uh, Speedy is taking bullshit shots. The entire time, so this is what makes him have to sit down and be like, "Shit, uh, I need to call my guy. I need to call my guy into the game." So he calls in. Uh, he puts Jeremy in for Renzo. Like we thought it was gonna be uh, Speedy because he told him, like he told him not to take that shot, like before he did, and he shot it anyway. So as the game is going, uh, Jeremy messes his knee up. He finally messes his knee up, which we knew at this point. It's wraps for him. Like, you know, it's already an injury. You've already been nursing it. Like, you, you kind of in trouble. Uh, but then Broke they, ass you know. legs. <laughs> Call that nigga Brand. <laughs> you got a nigga Brand. Brand the broken. God damn. <laughs> uh, he goes, you know, they, they kind of carry him off the court, you know, take him to the side. But uh, Lil Murder's jaw jacking still. He's talking crazy, talking crazy to. Um, to Kamal talking crazy about him. He talked crazy about his dad, and that's when he kind of kind of snaps out. And uh, Jeremy gets him to come 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 down. He said, "I got it, bro. Chill out, meditate, breathe, bro. Breathe. I got it." And he kind of pulls up on him, and he he knocks out a little murder, stone cold. I was like, "Come on, man. Again, man, again. Damn. How are you not prepared that somebody gonna swing on you?" Like my nigga, work on your reflexes because you done got punched in the face twice in two weeks. I just and he he knocks him out and then he tells him, you know, um, damn, he gonna die in the priest. He gonna I ain't never missing no white man funeral. No, he gonna die in the parking lot when we leave. This shit might be dope. <laughs> so I love I love that exchange. Because they was just like, I started to like him too. And it was just like, that was beautiful. Because he said, I'm still here in spirit. Your father's here in spirit. We're all here in spirit. And, he, and then he was just like, that's beautiful. They're going to kill him in the parking lot. But prior to this scene, before he got his knee injured, he dunked the ball. He did. Which he is did. something Woody Harrison's character could not do in the first film. Mm -hmm. And so the whole crowd went crazy. And then I think it was... Renzo. Uh, Renzo was Again. Just hungry ass. Like he had a whole tray this time. He was just eating and he was just like, what? Y'all act like white man can't dunk. And I was just like, all right, I see what y'all did there. That that was dope. But um yeah, and then like during the scene, Kamal's trying to get everything together, but then he sees Tiana mm -hmm. get a phone call. Soon as I saw that, I was like, all right, I know where this is going. I immediately knew. But what did you think? Did you think, like, with him seeing her get out the stands, and she obviously looked very upset, did you already know what was going to happen? Did you think, all right, this game about to be done? Did you think no. they was going to win the game? Uh, I, 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 I did. I did. Um, you know what? After they lost the first tournament, I was like, oh, shit. Like the Because in the, in the other movie, it wasn't a mini tournament. It was just the one the one and it was worth i think like ten thousand dollars i think scraps um, uh, bro i'm looking like these niggas got five hundred thousand for a tournament money. like like 30 but 30 years is a money changes like big time so um i felt that was for the win um you know in that situation i thought it was going to be a, a jeremy bad knee kobe bryant type win so it was dope to see they let allow kamal to win that off of a jump shot that Jeremy told him he didn't have. So, like, that was a, a nice um, 
a nice moment that I don't know if that was intentional, but it was dope that, you know, that's how it was won on doing what he wasn't good at. Um, but then he, you know, he asked his, his wife, uh, did he, did he pass? And she was like, yeah, he gone, baby. He gone. And he, you know, he wasn't like a, an emotional breakdown type scene. He was just like, I did it for, I, you know, I did this for him. I did this for us. You know, that's, that, that's some, that's a situation I no longer have to burden myself with, like, you know, my dad and he, and he was, he was able to see I am happy in this or doing, you know, what the, you know, whatever this was. And, um, did you cry? Um, no, nah, not that, not that. The moment when I was in the hospital would have got me. That's, that's the one that would have got me, but not, nothing after that. I tear <laughs> up. I, it was like thug tears though, but I was I get just it. like, I get it. It was it was it was like the that from the end of that movie, like whenever he him and her Tiana talked to the end, it was the entire thing was just like beautifully written. I felt like, um, so you know Blake Griffin is uh handing him the check, and he was like, "Oh, this 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 counts as community service to me. Just take this picture, and we can go." Like <laughs> he was like, "I wish he would have had more lines because allegedly he's killing it on the comedy circuit in L.A. So I wish he would have had some more stuff." Um, damn you got your into the streets in LA <laughs> <laughs> this nigga said he's killing it in LA I'm like, that's what they've been Arkansas. saying who is they on the internet <laughs> <laughs> the internet said he killing it on, 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 uh, on the stand up and what not I don't know All right, <laughs> you know did you know Tank the R&B singer is a comedian I feel like all his jokes would be sexual. They not, but that nigga is hilarious. Like he's been doing it longer than Ti was, but like he was like. Man, I heard Ti shit was whack. See, I've heard two things. I've heard different things in that. I've heard two different things, but I've I watched Tank. It was like okay, because he's musically inclined. This MF would be playing the piano and just like saying just crazy shit. Like, to, but he be saying stuff that actually makes sense. It was like okay. I can, he got, he has the timing for this. I want him to go ahead and make a special where people can see it, but yeah, no, he, you gotta watch him on, like, watch clips on YouTube, he be posting and stuff. He, he actually funny. Um, but we have this, the scene that you didn't want, Jazz. Um, Jeremy and to, uh, Tati in the in the bar where he's apologizing for being such a dick and a douchebag too. How did you feel about this this scene? I really thought she was going to leave him because that's what they did in the first film. But obviously, no. But I also feel like the stakes were higher in the first one than in this one. I agree. In this one, yes, he lied. But then when you think about the reasons as to why and when he's able to hold like, hold himself accountable for his actions. Woody Harrison's character, he didn't do that in the first one. His intentions were in a good space, but man, she was, he got she, fucked. He got fucked in that last situation. I feel. I mean, he did because he was trying to help his friend who he had said put her in position, which was yeah. bullshit. I don't I think like he ever told her. He did. I don't think he did either because when she was just like, "I told you they were gonna call," he was like, "Uh huh, yeah." So I don't think she even knew. And I feel like if she did, maybe it would have been different, especially being that. Wesley Snipes character Sydney, their house had just gotten broken into. So he they his family needed that money to get out of that situation. If Gloria would have known all of that, I don't think she would have left. But it also reminds me of in one of the scenes in Intergalactic, when you have all the information, you can respond differently. But the main character in that, he didn't tell Meadow all the information at first. Mm -hmm. So she was just like, fuck it, and she bounced. Yeah. That's why communication is important. So if you don't want to say nothing, you can't really be upset about how the person reacts. Mm -hmm. But I think in this, he let her know, he was like, I'm sorry. And he said something really powerful was, I was afraid your dreams would take you away from me. That's selfish as fuck. But it's real, but it's selfish. And that's crazy because I was just like, damn, because sis was really putting her like stuff on hold so he could catch up or he wouldn't be left behind. And he was obviously aware of that. And he was just like, I was afraid your dreams were going to get you out of here. 
So I didn't want to celebrate or support you to the full extent, which is weird because when they were in the bed, he was extremely supportive. So I, I was confused I at that point. Maybe uh, he was only supportive on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> so he was supportive, but when it was a moment of, but I think it was, I mean, that moment of him when he wasn't supportive, that was in the middle of an argument. So it would have been hard for him to be like, oh my God, let me stop how I feel right now. I'm so happy you may, you do. Because, you know, in that moment, it's just that it's, it's that, but he, he went about it in a childish way because he just left. I agree. He didn't, he didn't try to sit listen to her and then then speak on it but then she she got personal so she started bringing up personal shit you and your mama house you childish you dad and i was like fuck you and i would have started throwing shit across the wall no i'm kidding but you for real like <laughs> you, you tell the truth <laughs> but i've been in, i've been in his position though i've been i've definitely had a selfish I've been selfish like you have that good the good person or the person you feel you need or you want and you kind of disregard that person, like focusing on yourself or not necessarily focusing on yourself, but just focus on the wrong shit. You lose focus um, on what matters the most or what's supposed to matter the most. So uh, it brought me back to to when Gloria, when I heard isms that she used to be saying when she was like, you know, sometimes when you win, you lose. And sometimes when you lose, you win. And sometimes when it's a tie, I forget what the fuck she said for the tie, but the win and lose part, it made sense because he won that game, but he lost her. Um, and although he lost her, he won in another space because them two, they were toxic together anyway, just given the situation because the debt he actually was in was because of her. Like, I don't know if they, if that ever was brought back and like, she never even paid that shit back. He just gave up everything he won that last game to fix her debt, which is bullshit. But hey, who am I to talk about? Who am I to bring that back up for Gloria? Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I want to I want to piggyback on that because of um, what you just said, and it made me because I recently watched a very toxic movie, Malcolm and Marie. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you talk about toxic shit. But it was a line in there where, and I'm paraphrasing. Zendaya said, once you have somebody that loves you and that's there for you, you no longer think of them again. It's not until you're about to lose them is when you think about them again. To where it's one thing, to where it's just like when you have something, you don't appreciate it anymore. But as soon as it's being taken away from you or it's about to be gone is when you just like, oh shit, let me show my appreciation for it. And at that point, it could possibly be too late. And obviously in this film, it wasn't too late for Jeremy because Sis said, if you can get up on your own, I'll think about it. He obviously, <laughs> couldn't, get, he obviously couldn't get up on his own, but she helped him up and lift him up and they're engaged. Congratulations she to them. She uplifted him. Aww. She uplifted him. Yay. So, <laughs> I mean, it's one of the things where it's just like sometimes you have to get out your way and think about things from another person's point of view and how your actions and behavior is affecting them. So it's just being selfless. And I mean, that's just something you go through in friendships and relationships and all that other shit, but it's important. It is. It is. Um, we did a one year time jump. Um, we catch up with the money, beautiful shop. Her name's on the outside of it. You see, um, I can't. Th I, I believe it was it. I, was his son Kamal Junior? I feel like he had a different name. I'm not sure, but his son. You see the son running around outside. He runs into it, but it's obviously a nice neighborhood. He can be outside. Um, he runs inside of it, inside the shop. I'm just saying, it matters because in the other one, they was in the bad neighborhood. So uh, he runs inside the shop. Uh, she tells his ass to come down. Stop all they running. Nothing to be running inside my <laughs> running inside Black my mama. place of established. Black mama. <laughs> Yeah, and they turn on the TV, and we see our guy come on, man. He done got a he, because of that tournament, he got a contract um, in China. Uh, I feel like he won a championship when he was out there. I, I, I'm not mature if I'm not tripping. They won something. They won something. They won something important. He won that, but they did so well, it brought him back to the America in the G League. So he got into the G League. Uh, I, they didn't say how old he was because he had to be younger than Jeremy, though, right? You think so? I honestly thought he was older than Jeremy. 
but I don't know. It's a good, it's a, I mean, he was in high school in 2011. So, I mean, it's, it's a possible, I mean, you know, what you trying to do math real quick. I'm thinking 2011 in a high school, but, uh, I already said my age. I was done with school. Like, <laughs> um, I was. Yeah. I'm not lying today. <laughs> so I don't know if he graduated in 2011 or was about to graduate in 2011 since he got arrested. I don't know what happened at that moment, but um, he gets a contract in the G League. And because he did so well in the G League, he got a contract for the LA Lakers, a 10 day contract. Uh, which has become a, a big thing nowadays. Like yes. Carmelo, Carmelo got one, and he did so well. He came, he got put out, came back into the league. So it's a real thing. It, it happens often, and we just he just catches us up on what was it his motivation. Um, and he, you know, said basically you know, his family, uh, just his his his, his, mom, his wife, uh, his son. His pops and this crazy ass white dude, which it kind of it cuts over to them watching it on the phone while at the game, which you know Jeremy is also doing well. Um, he's taking on clients. He got Tyler Harrow, who plays for the Miami Heat, on his team, going fucking crazy. I remember like if you you couldn't like twenty thirty years ago, like if I if my, if we seen Michael Jordan like that on TV, how would you how would you have felt like if you seen him on TV acting like Tyler, like even in the movie. It's one of those things to where it's like, that's why they say it's best to never meet your heroes. Because looking at somebody, looking at their talent, you create a mystique and a character about them based off of what the media is showing you. Mm -hmm. But then once you meet them, they're completely different. So I would say if I saw Jordan doing all that bullshit, definitely <laughs> made me have different opinions on him. But since I'm from Charlotte, I've been in clubs and I've seen Jordan in there chilling in VIP smoking cigars. Now, was he screaming and cussing people out? Nope. He was just minding his business, but like as you said earlier, when you see celebrities and stuff like that, it's just like, oh, okay. Like the nigga owns the the Charlotte Hornets, <laughs> so <laughs> of course he's good, you know what I'm saying. But this was like years ago. But um, yeah, like if I was out and I saw Issa doing some rude shit to somebody, I'm be like, damn. Like I, it's just like I saw you as somebody completely different than a rude asshole. Nobody wants to see their idols or heroes in that kind of spot. And some people just ignore it. Now they just having a bad day. Like, uh, they kind of they snapped on a person and threw cake at them. That ain't no bad day, sis. But <laughs> I mean, I don't know, like, what would you how would you have felt like if you saw that? Um I don't know. It just, I don't, it just depends. Like when I was younger, like you know, watching TV and watching movies, like if somebody I I like died, I was sad. So it just, you know, it just all depend in that moment. So like, I think it's dope now. You watch those celebrities, and it's just like we know they're just regular people. So seeing him do regular shit, it's just like okay, that's that's wild. Like he, that nigga's wild. Like well, that person's wild, and so it, that's that's what it is. As long as they're not, I feel like if they're like the way he was doing, like was it not harming somebody? I think it'd be. I think I would have been. It'd be like fair game. I mean, they said he had anger issues. Um, yeah, and he's trying to work on his personality, or he's trying to work on his character, or something like anger issues. Jason, you mean to tell <laughs> me if you came across Summer Walker and she just snapped on you because she's working on her anger issues? Actually. <laughs> No, when it comes to when it comes to somebody you lusting over versus somebody that you kind of idolize. <laughs> Wait a minute, chill different. out, chill out. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> it's chill completely out, chill different. Out. So I'm just saying, because sometimes folks be they be lusting so much they ignore all the red flags, even the ones that are on level eighty five to hundred. So. Yeah, yeah, but that was the end of white men can't jump. Uh, so, of course, the million dollar question is, was it good, though? Yes, I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed the positivity and the um, the message they were sending and also the um, oh, damn, what am I trying to say? 
I don't know why the word reparations is in my head because that is not where I'm trying to go. It was said in the movie, so impossibly. I don't even remember where it was said. Oh, I remember where it was said when uh He got Kamal beat by the white man. Yeah. It is um beat by the white man. Representation of black love, black fatherhood, and black joy. That's what I was trying to get. Just seeing that in a film. I loved it. This movie, you had a few obstacles that the characters had to go through. But it was everyday obstacles that people go through. It wasn't anything that was outlandish. And they were able to come to resolutions. And it's just the communication and just the Black love and joy. All of that sends a positive message. So, of course, it's going to get my vote. Yeah, so. um, same for me. Same for me. I I really enjoyed it, and for what is not for what is worth, but I I remember back in the back in the day, huh, whenever old. Creed two dropped, um, there was a big tussle on the internet about um Tessa's character and male toxic traits and male toxicity in Michael B. Jordan character in the movie and how they back they put her character into the back seat. Um, this movie here, just given that Tiana was a supporting character, I feel like you you were right. Like, sure, her her role was largely impactful. Like every time she was on the scene and on the on the screen, she stole the scene. Um, and that's not to take away from Sonequa, um, uh, because he was amazing in this movie as well. Just for for what they made him to made him be, which was for them to reimagine or redo a classic movie done 32 years ago and to 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 give us what they gave us i feel like it was i think it was a, a, a one of the best routes to go about the story to make it different but to make it the same at the same exact time um and even in the old movie the wife was super impactful in it just given that with that his his entire motivation was for his wife. There wasn't a scene of him dealing with other women or any of those those type of things. It was just a black love and what he was gonna do for his wife and how he would have, you know, what he was doing to make sure he made her happy. So I really appreciate them bringing it back. Like we need that. We needed to see that. So Yeah. And one of the things, um I feel like how this film was, if you adjusted only a few things actually probably not a few 35 percent you could have made this separate or be its own entity not even related to the original i agree and i say because it was so it had so many different elements that didn't have to connect to the first one to where if you were to adjust things this movie could have been named something different could have had its own identity not even connected to that film Mm -hmm. and so i was trying to think before we recorded what would I have changed or how I would have made this different to where a majority of it would have stayed the same and it not really connect too much to the first film and I would have called this something completely different, but I didn't. It's been a you busy week. Of it. I couldn't. But, I get it. We've got a lot going on. We right. Life, everything. So, but I, because it was so many different, it, it's, it's able to stand on its own and I feel like, unfortunately, for people who did see the first one and enjoy it, they were like, I don't want to mess with the the remake and all that but it's just like some of the elements are the same but not too many to where it's a full remake and so we've been seeing full remakes a lot so i feel like this kind of holds its own i do and i think they did uh i think they did a very good job i i i believe where i believe where they probably I, I, i need to actually look into it like to actually see how they came into that like was the title the first thing or was the story the first thing because i feel like once you if you were to just look at the like look at it didn't know what the name of it was and you were like damn this made me think a white man can't jump because we got the regardless of whatever it's it's the whole thing of that the basketball element of it being a black guy and a white guy and them trying to coexist in the world even though they're both going through the same exact thing just in a different a different way so i feel like that's where it would have still it still would have hit in like it still would have um 
it, it would have put you in that mindset. So I don't I don't know how they could have changed it outside of taking the basketball. If you take the basketball aspect out of it, because there's other things you could have did right. to show two people struggling and them trying to make it in a di- make it a different way. So because it could have been a case of where instead of them getting together for basketball, they dance off get together. No, nigga, they're saying you got served. <laughs> <laughs> or just like them going into business with each other with a food truck. Okay. Okay. I and, like I, I, I can see that as well. It'll make to, me no, it don't make me think of that. I take the back. Yeah. And then to where they're trying to get into like a food competition or something like that. It's just like, you know what? Do we got a we got a food competition movie? I mean, I don't know a food truck. If so, like just just to blend it, possibly. I don't know. Nothing is coming to mind, but I, I watch a lot of stuff. I haven't seen anything I agree. recently. I'm where... thinking. Of, I'm, all, I'm only thinking of black stuff too. Like I'm well, thinking yeah, like because... Family Johnson, the Family Johnson reunion or whatever that was. But, but that was probably that was just a like a different. a one event of like him traveling yeah. to go see his family and him giving him shit. But them it's, coming it's... together, and it's like okay, I'm selling these, or they could have started off by selling plates, and it's just like oh, if we had our own truck. We could be pushing, and if we can get our own truck before this food truck competition that's coming in like six months or some shit, mm-hmm. and then the wife is like, "Here go five k." A food truck costs more than that. Here go your, you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> you the, the, the you, money. You in the industry a little bit? Uh, yeah, a little bit. That's why I said it's definitely one of my favorite. So shout out to everybody that got a food truck, and if you're in the yes. Tampa area, shout out to Shade by the Bay. Hey. But um, check them out, please. I mean, look, Juneteenth was yesterday, so we out here promoting. Oh pushing. shit! Uh, since we're doing it, uh, shout out to um Killer. What what Killer got? What what is it? Killer uh, the juices. Lee Shay, Lee Shay, yep. Lee Shay juices. Shout out to Killer. Uh, uh, I can't even think of her app, but shout out to um. Lee we we can tag her definitely. Uh, in the Shay. Charlotte area, but she does ship. Yep, she does ship. Check out, check her out. Uh, she definitely has a, a juice. Since we this movie was talking about juice detox and getting, she's she even has a book for you guys to go purchase. Please check that out. Again, we we supporting everything black. I'm rooting for everybody black. There you go. And I hope you can know how you know how to read because if you can do TikTok <laughs> dances, you need to know how to read and go ahead and get that book. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And make sure you can read out loud. Because I know a lot of y'all niggas probably can't do that. <laughs> stumbling over words and shit. <laughs> I'm waiting for that TikTok challenge. Read out loud. <laughs> and when it happens, you heard it here first on the Was It Good Though podcast. But yes. So. <laughs> read a book. Read a book. Read a motherfucking book. <laughs> read that shit out loud, nigga. Don't skip no words. You looking like a motherfucking bird. But look, album <laughs> dropping next year, Jason. Next year, nigga. Next year, nigga. It's been next year for next since next year been here, nigga. It's gonna stay that way. <laughs> All right. But was it good though? <laughs> it was. We both agreed it was. Um, like I said, just giving it. Uh, so shout out to them for even trying to come up with an idea that was different enough to be able to put it out there. Hopefully, people can go out. We'll, go out and look at it i know a lot of people are hesitant because oh my god i can't i love the first <laughs> one just so much bitch go watch this movie <laughs> the movie is the movie is the i i enjoyed the movie um so this this isn't one of my 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 five or sixes it's definitely be like a seven <laughs> i know I, I know i know but it's but it, five and six is my yeah but i i really enjoyed this movie uh, maybe seven five. I maybe even give it a seven to five, seven point five. But that's that's me. That's me. Uh, Lake of Thrones. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna, I'm gonna going to let you go first. Ladies first. I am going to go with. Mm, I'm gonna go with Speedy, Vince Staples. He was in Abbott Elementary, which unfortunately is delayed due to the writer strike. Pay womp, them. Womp, womp. So we can get back to our shows. Please. So, yes. Please. Please. But right. yeah, shout, out to, but shout out to Ben Staples, though, man. I, I've been enjoying enjoying him for, like, years in rap. So it was dope. But then Issa was one of the first people that gave him a role in Insecure. He was himself, but he was extra as himself. So I, I But I love that um, 
Ah, oh, Abby. Who is what's her name? You talking about um Lee. What? Oh, you talking about Quinta. Quinta, yeah, she brought him in um on their show. Like he he does a great job at acting. Like he he's 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 silly as hell anyway. So just seeing him acting is just like it's dope to see him doing it. Um I'm gonna go with his brother. I'm gonna go with uh Lamont. I'm gonna go with Slink Johnson. Um, aka Black Jesus. I'm not gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with um Space Jam, a new legacy. I know a lot of people that movie get a lot of flack. Um Forward, but as a kid, a movie to watch with your kids, I feel like it was a pretty decent flick for that. It's definitely not the original, but it's fine. It's not supposed to be. It's a new legacy. It literally says it in the title. Space Jam, a new legacy. So um, shout out to LeBron for that. That just let me know that shit probably trash. I mean, you know what I'm saying? If I... We if I, I, I watched it more times than I probably should have watched it. But, you know. Okay. But all right, we, look, we we not bashing nothing black out here. So come on, come on. They even got some of the some of your Game of Thrones people in that movie. I feel like I saw the end of it, and I was like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, Jazz, um, I think that was it. Uh, did you have any legends that you wanted to to get off in this? Huh? Nah, not outside of like. I feel like. I kind of wish they would have adjusted this about 30% to make it its own entity to where it could have been its own thing. Cause they seem like they had a nice amount of things put together that didn't have any relation to the first film. I can understand being inspired by it, but I just feel like what they had here just a bit more, they could have did their own thing and it could have been a really dope black comedy on Hulu. Black inspirational yeah. comedy on Hulu. But I understand doing a movie like this, you're going to get the original fans, fans from the original movie to come check it out. It. But mm, then you're also, based off the name. you also going to have people like, I'm not going to watch it because. Turned off because of the name. So it's, it's, it's a 50-50 it's a, chance. It's a 50-50, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't think I had a ledge. <clears throat> um, and they're not, nothing too crazy. That's nothing we went through everything. We re, we re, we've rewritten this movie. We've written we've written we've rewritten. 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 Re, 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 bring back P Valley, nigga. We trying to we trying to go to the bank, bitch. What's, what's that? Jason trying to go. Hey, y'all hiring? That's a joke. <laughs> I'm sure she a diamond missing, nigga. Put me on the door. What's up? I'm, I'm <laughs> he in Tyler Perry Studios. You seen that shit? I did. I did. And he then I joined it too. <laughs> he having fun too. I know Trevante about to be dropping videos. I'm gonna watch those though. I'm gonna watch those. I bet, man. But um yeah, man. This is the Was It Good Though podcast. I am one of your co-hosts. This is Jason. Jazz is over here. Um, this was episode 54. Um, again, we appreciate everybody who's listening weekly, um, whether it's Apple, Spotify, um, if you're watching it through the, through the premiere, when we're in there, we can chat with you. Um, if you're in our discord, we still, still friendly. We're still inviting people in there. We, we're having conversations. Um, Spider-Verse has had the chat jumping again, but you know, it is, it's those things. Some things everybody's going to get with, but oftentimes we, everybody's doing different things, life. It's lifing, so we understand. Uh, but we chat through our um, through our different avenues that we have, social medias and whatnot. Um, Jazz, did you have any final words for the people of the world? No, I just want to say thank you to everybody that continues to support us, communicate with us, check us out. Uh, we are officially in our year two because we've already hit our one year. Mm-hmm. So now we're now we're a year and some change. So <laughs> so it's um trying some things, you know, trying to see where to go. Like Jason always say, throwing shit at the wall and see what stick. Let's it's, it's, fucking it's, it's, go. It's been a lot of stuff sticking. So got a nice. Uh, that sound wild. What else? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> But nah, but 
shout out to everybody that checks us out so yeah we do definitely appreciate that again this was episode 54 white men can't jump but they could in this movie they could and that's movie. that's uh, all right i'm done we done, we done. <laughs> i mean hey you see, exactly. you see what I'm saying? Like, oh, I didn't need like, hey, You didn't need to do it. <laughs> but it was good. It was good. It, yeah, that's good. So, again, we appreciate y'all for listening. This is Jason. This is my homie, Chaz. Deuces. Cheers. Burr, 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 burr. The audio ain't catching none of that shit. I, I heard all that, actually.